a short poem to strengthen our understanding of Allah. We are not learning aqeedah, my brothers and my sisters, in order to engage in disputations and argumentations. Cut this out, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes studying these books, one begins to feel this way, in this arrogant manner, as if he has some sort of green card now to enter into a jannah. Issues of Qadr, the unseen, the shirk mean family of the messenger, who comes under it? Who's a sahabi? Who are these three golden generations? Does anyone know who the four were? Do angels of hearts? And the mizan. Three things that are going to be weighed is what? What is the hold? Anyone know some of those that are not going to be tested in the grave? Is that enough for me now to enter into a jannah? الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه والسراج المنيرة جزاكم الله خيرا ما الله عز وجل bless every single one of you guys and remember this always brothers and sisters right the bigger the sacrifice the bigger the gifts from Allah سبحانه وتعالى right secondly brothers and sisters uh, today we're not delivering a lecture Right? This is not a lecture today. Some of you guys may have attended my lectures in the past. 50 minutes, an hour, and then everybody goes home. Iman may go up. Right? You feel great about yourself. And then after a week, the Iman just goes back down again. This time around, some of you guys may have noticed. I've just been mainly going through books. Right? I've been mainly going through books because we've done enough lectures. And I am a believer in there being a balance between books and likewise lectures. Through the lectures, you emphasize on the importance of seeking knowledge. Unfortunately, because most uh, are not students of knowledge, they're not theological, right? Um, there isn't really uh, an importance in many people's lives with regards to uh, the importance of studying our creed as Muslims, what the representation of Islam is. All of that is almost non-existent in many households. This is why we deliver a lot of these lectures in order to pull people in, in order to seek knowledge and to take the deen of Islam so much more seriously. Even when you think about a lot of the, as we're going to come into inshallah ta'ala in a short while, a lot of problems that people run into, right, is simply because a lack of knowledge, a prevalence of ignorance. This is why I always say to the brothers and sisters, if I didn't take anything away from the 10 years that I was studying other than the fact that we're able to navigate and maneuver around the people's problems, it would have been more than enough. Right? And that's just a tiny bit of it. Right? A tiny bit of the knowledge that is there for people to right, acquire. Right? So inshallah ta'ala, today will be a dawra. I'm hoping to finish it in two hours. Huh? I'm hoping to finish it before two hours. Because I know some of you guys have somewhere to go at 8 p.m. Right, but very likely I may uh, end up going over it by a little uh, while, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> so my brothers and my sisters, before I start this mandoma, I want to mention the following. We are not learning aqeedah, my brothers and my sisters, in order to engage in disputations and argumentations. Right, I'll say that again. We're not learning this creed Right, the belief that a Muslim should hold in order to jump online now and start debating and engaging in argumentations and disputations on social media platforms such as Twitter, or oh, which is known now as X. We are learning the creed of a Muslim in order to strengthen our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to also gain an understanding with regards to the unseen aspects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Quran and likewise the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned. Right? And before I move on to the second point, my brothers and my sisters, and I think this is very, very important for us to really comprehend. One may say to himself upon going through some of the matters of the unseen, that we will be covering in this mandoma. People always ask, how do I know that this is actually the truth? Some of the aspects of the Quran, right? There is a chance that it is something else. How would you answer that, my brothers and my sisters? Right? A lot of the matters of the unseen that we may be covering today are issues that me and you cannot see with the naked eye, right? They are promises that we will be able to acquire in the hereafter. 
This is when the importance of studying your religion comes in extremely handy. It's a common doubt, right? That is exasperated in university settings, right? There are people over there, my brothers and my sisters, they're learning about our religion, right? Spending days and nights learning about the Muslim's doctrine. Not so he can become guided, but rather to use it against the Muslim. And this is one of the doubts that gets thrown around. First and foremost, my brothers and my sisters, with regards to this Quran, right? This book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. This Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down as later on, inshallah ta'ala, we will speak about the Quran being the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And its divinity. However, now very, very quickly, my brothers and my sisters, in the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, a challenge, right, was sent out to the most eloquent of Arabs. The Quran is in which language? It's in the Arabic language, right? It's in the Arabic language. They were challenged because they began to deny and doubt the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So they were challenged in order to produce a Quran of similar kind. Like Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَى يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Sayyidina Muhammad, if the jinn and the ins were to come together in order to produce a Qur'an of such, they wouldn't be able to do so. This was the first out of the three challenges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, right? In order for them to meet. These are no ordinary Arabs. They are the most eloquent of Arabs, my brothers and my sisters. They weren't able to produce it, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easier for them. You can't produce this whole Quran. How many pages in the Quran, brothers and sisters? Huh? 600. By the way, brothers, inshallah, you'll get breaks, huh? 600 pages in the Quran. Produce something similar to that. They weren't able to do so. So it was made easier. Allah says in the Quran, أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَاهُ قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِعَشْرِ ثُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَاتِ Right. Produce 10 chapters of the Quran. Right. Fabricate it. Make it fabricated. Just produce something similar to it. They weren't able to do so, my brothers and my sisters. What are the 10 smallest chapters in the Quran? Where does it start from? Huh? If we just start from what? Surah Al-Fil. Huh? Small surah, right? They weren't able to produce anything like that. So Allah Azza wa decided to make it easy for them. What was the third? Verse that was sent down as a challenge. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِي فَأْتُوا بِي سُورَةً Produce one chapter. What's the smallest chapter in the Quran? Sent. إِنَّا عَطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِيَكَ هُوَ الْأَبَتَرِ They weren't able to produce anything like it, my brothers and my sisters. You have a man in the middle of the desert, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? He didn't have modern day technology, right? To be able to discover some of the things that were mentioned in the Quran, such as that which relates to the embryo. It's been mentioned in such detail that it's impossible for a man in the middle of the desert to just fabricate something like this. Right? And up until now, my brothers and my sisters, they weren't able to produce anything like it. Right? Likewise, when you look at the chain of transmission, whether it may be the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you guys know of any religion, my brothers and my sisters, when it comes to a report, which we claim to be divine, right? Has to go through such a scrutiny before we end up accepting it. Right? Every reporter in that chain of narration, right? Needs to be triple checked, making sure that he's trustworthy. There's a whole science called Mustalah al-Hadith which is dedicated to making sure that we can accept this chain of transmission that has come with a report. 
right? This, my brothers and sisters, is the difference between the Quran and any other current book that people follow today. So we accept that this Quran, my brothers and sisters, is unchallenged. It is divine. It is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And it hasn't been tampered with. And this is min mu'jizati al-Quran. It's from the miracles of the Quran that it hasn't been tampered with from the time that it was sent down all the way up until now. Millions have memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters? But when someone memorizes the gospel, I remember years ago, I came across an article on the BBC, I believe it was. Right? That someone memorized the gospel. It was what? A fraction of the Quran. There was a big deal about it. Right? The Quran has been preserved as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down over 1400 years ago. We are going to preserve it. Every letter, every word, every sentence, it is preserved in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? And whenever they try to tamper with it, we always find out. Sahih? You get some of these apps that have Islamic names, huh? Or these websites that have Islamic names. But they are trying to infiltrate Al-Islam and their works. Right? فَهَذَا أَمْرٌ مُهِمٌ جِدًّا My brothers and my sisters, I'll give you guys an example. In fact, happened here and I mentioned it in many of the universities. Just to show you how every letter and also every kasra, fatha and dhamma is preserved. You guys remember my brothers and my sisters that viral video? Right? And it was Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar, I believe his name is. Wardera, they call him the Gaffa. Right? Who is leading, and by the way my brothers and my sisters, he is mutqin. Right? He barely ever mistakes, right? When it comes to reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or he barely ever falls into a mistake when leading taraweeh. Hmm? A little kid behind him is listening to the recitation of the Imam. What did he say? فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ What's the correct version? Huh? فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ ولا لا? Abdullahi, are you mixing the two up? فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ He said, and then the little child corrects him. فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْخَى Right? It is. It has been preserved to that extent. No one can just turn up and start tampering with the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So the Quran, my brothers and my sisters, is حق, the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the truth. So if we've accepted that. Right? There should be no hesitation when it comes to accepting whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed every single one of us with regards to the matters of the unseen. Right? So this is what we want to achieve through these sittings inshallah ta'ala today. We want to be able to increase our iman to learn about what a Muslim needs to hold as his doctrine. Right? The purpose isn't disputations and argumentations, right? And to now start causing tensions at home, you've learned a little something, then you go home and then you start shoving it down the throats of your parents, la ya jama'ah. Or to start walking around arrogantly, right? To start walking around arrogantly as if you have some sort of green card that you are now entitled to al-jannah because of what you've learned now. And inshallah ta'ala, your belief system, right? Is important. In fact, extremely important. As I will come into, inshallah ta'ala, speak about it in a moment. Remember, you also, despite the aqidah that you embrace, you still have to what? Do righteous deeds. Right? This is very, very important here, my brothers and my sisters. I've seen a lot of people fall. They learn a little bit, and then he's walking around as if he's on cloud nine. La ma yasruh. Right? We're trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that which we are learning. Right? Even if you now begin to believe that you have the correct aqidah, my brothers and my sisters, there's still a long way to go. Right? For those who attended my dawah, we spoke about the concept of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal between two wings. Does anyone remember it? Huh? Ahsan. 
hope and fear. وهم الذين بنوا منازل سيرهم بين الرجاء والخوف للديان. We balance our pursuit to Allah Azza wa Jal through hope and fear. I do a righteous deed, I hope that Allah Azza wa Jal accepts it. I commit a sin, I'm fearful of the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal because there's a possibility He may punish me for it. Right? So we remain on our toes, my brothers and my sisters. Right? There's still a long way to go. Before I start the mandoma, my brothers and my sisters, I have written down here why aqeedah is extremely important. Ahmiyatul aqeedah. Right? Number one, my brothers and my sisters, لم يظهر الفساد الكثير إلا بعد الاعتقاد. A lot of the corruption that we see today, my brothers and my sisters, would you agree that it originated from a belief that one has embraced. Think about it for a moment. Even Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, right, he says, فَقَلَّ مَنْ تَجِلُ فِي اعْتِقَادِهِ فَسَادًا إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُظْهِرُ ذَلِكَ فِي عَمَلِهِ You will barely find, right, you will barely find someone who has a corrupt belief except that this will now begin to show on his limbs. Now think about it, my brothers and my sisters, the way right? People get oppressed and butchered and massacred, right? With what they are doing. Are they doing this, my brothers and my sisters, based on anything other than a belief? Do they not believe that they have to do X, Y, and Z? Right? To our Palestinian brothers and sisters. This is a belief. And this belief, it didn't just remain in one's body, لا, or inside of his heart. It begins to profess on one's limbs. What is happening to our yoga brothers and sisters? Right? And what is being done to them? Would you agree, my brothers and my sisters? Right? This originated from a belief. The way we as Muslims may be treated by whoever it might be, it originates from what? It originates, it originates from that which an individual believes. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters? So am I wrong to say that the whole world runs on what people believe? Agreed, my brothers and my sisters? Right? Even today, my brothers and my sisters, when you look at all of these other isms and schisms, right? People now begin to behave a certain way. He may end up what? Uttering a statement of kufr. Sometimes we hear that religion needs to be reinterpreted. So you can what? fit within her mindar. It can fit within what she is looking through. Right? It fits her narrative. It needs to be reinterpreted. Oh, when I come to a certain verse now, and one of these ladies turns around and she says that this is extremely unjust when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says X, Y, and Z, even though Allah said about himself, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدَ Allah does not oppress anyone. These are very dangerous statements that an individual now is uttering. Sahih? Extremely dangerous. And these are some of the modern day ideologies that today are piercing through the hearts of Muslims and ripping them off their identity, their faith. Hmm? That's why it's extremely important, my brothers and sisters, for every single one of us to learn about our aqidah. Right? You can take it back to every corruption that we have in today's day and age. It originated from a corrupt belief. Don't ever forget this. You will barely find someone with a corrupt belief except that he will now begin to profess on an individual's limbs, whether it may be his tongue, whether it may be his, uh, his hands or his, right? His feet. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, it is from the greatest of causes to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You loving Allah azza wa jal and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you. Right? And when we now begin to learn about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and his names and his attributes, again, when we study the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
The objective behind is to learn about who he is. Right? The primary objective is not now for me to start debating with others. No. The primary objective, my brothers and my sisters, is to learn about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Would you guys not agree, my brothers and my sisters, the more you learn about someone, the more you're, the more likely you're going to be respecting him? Put your hand up if you're engaged. MashaAllah. A couple of brothers are engaged. That's the most I've ever had whenever I've asked this question. Summer season as well, right? Wedding season. Huh? Why did you pick her out of everyone else? Because of all the characteristics that you came to know about her, sahih? Sure, you were spoiled for choice, huh? Mr. Handsome. Mr. Wonderful. You had all of these ladies and mashallah, right? You are the chosen one to her and she is the chosen one to you, right? But why this specific individual, Ish? Simply because of all the things that you came to know about her, right? It's a very, very common problem that we have, my brothers and my sisters. Today, a lot of young people are given orders and commandments and prohibitions by their parents or by their elders to do X, Y, and Z. You tell that young child, go and pray. He doesn't even know who he's praying to. Agreed? He doesn't know anything about Allah. He doesn't know anything about Islam. But when his friend says to him, go and do X, Y, and Z, he's ready. Right? To conform to whatever his friends are asking him for. Agreed, my brothers and my sisters? So how do we increase our love for the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? The sustainer, the uh, disposer of all affairs, our creator. Learn about him. Right? Learn about who Allah azza wa jal. And our only source of knowledge that we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? His name is an attributes. Right? Not that I'm trying to compare Allah Azza wa Jal, right? To, uh, to Bushra. La, abadan. But you picked her because of all the characteristics and traits that you came to know about her. And then tomorrow you find out that she wakes up in the last third of the night and she prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're thinking to yourself, I've hit the jackpot. Because of what you came to know about her. Likewise, my brothers and my sisters, it's a similar impact when you learn about Allah Azza wa Jal. When you learn about who He is in terms of His wisdom. Why things take place? Is it because Allah Azza wa Jal hates you? Or is it because Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to come back up stronger? And that everything happens for a reason. Not to punish you, my brothers and my sisters, but because Allah Azza wa Jal has something great awaiting in store for you. Allah. Right? You will live a very different life, my brothers and my sisters, treading this earth on your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? See how it impacts your day-to-day -day attitude, whether it may be with people, whether it may be with your parents more specifically, your work colleagues, right? And also the calamities and the hardships that come your way. The hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a convoy. Right? وَكَانَ يَقْرَأُ لِأَصْحَابِهِ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ And he placed in charge of them one of the companions. Right? And you know what he would do, my brothers and my sisters? In all of his prayers, he would read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Every time he reads the salah, my brothers and my sisters, he's leading them, right? Next rakah, and the next time they pray behind him, and when they went back, they mentioned this to the Messenger So the Messenger said, Saluhu li shayin Ask him why he does that. So they asked him. You know what his response was? لِأَنَّهَا صِفَةُ الرَّحْمَانِ Because قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الرَّحْمَانِ the most merciful. Right? And he said وَأَنَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَقْرَأَ بِهَا And I love to read Surah Al-Ikhlas in my prayer. You know what the Messenger said? أَخْبِرُوهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّهُ 
tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him. Right? This is an individual, my brothers and my sisters, whose heart became filled with the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is because he internalized Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, which can be turned intellectuous. Which can be turned into what? Intellectuous, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Also Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, فَمَنْ عَرَفَ اللَّهَ بِأَسْمَاهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَأَفْعَالِهِ أَحَبَّهُ لَا مَحَالَةِ Whoever well, learns about Allah Azza wa Jal, his names and his attributes and the actions of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is a must that love will be acquired. It is a must. No two ways about it. So I think every single one of us, inshallah, is going to start what? Learning about the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? After this. Wallah, if you ask me, right, I would say that this is key, especially in today's day and age. Right? Especially in today's day and age. Huh? When you have young people being dragged left, right and center. Right? They're being dragged to different directions, my brothers and my sisters. Allah Mustaan. But they don't know nothing about Allah Azza Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi also says فَالتَّوْحِيدُ يَفْتَحُ لِلْعَبْدِ بَابَ الْخَيْرِ وَالسُّرُورِ وَالْلَذَّةِ وَالْفَرَحِ وَالْإِبْتِهَاجِ When you learn about your monotheism, my brothers and sisters, your tawheed, it opens the door of goodness and happiness. You do the right thing, my brothers and sisters, and I always say this to our sisters. You withholding from displaying yourself all over the internet, thinking, thinking, my brothers and sisters, that Prince Charming is not going to come along, right? A tawheed. Right? A tawheed, my brothers and my sisters. And I've given examples before. I think last time I delivered a lecture here. Right? I delivered a lecture here. I gave an example of a woman who was conscious of Allah Azza wa in private. She was somebody who internalized the capabilities and actions of Allah. Right? And then subhanAllah, Umar ibn al-Khattab happened to be patrolling that night and leaning on her wall. And he heard about how conscious she was of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments. And then she ended up getting married. That was, right, as a result of her tawheed. Right? Number three, my brothers and my sisters, being ignorant when it comes to one's aqidah, it could potentially lead to you, right, worshipping nothing. If you have a misconstrued understanding of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and when it comes to his attributes and his names, and also his uh, capabilities, imagine somebody now, holds this belief that Allah Azza wa has no names and he has no attributes whatsoever. Right? If you ask him now to describe nothing, right? If you ask him now to describe nothing, it would be similar to when he describes Allah Azza wa because he has completely removed all of his names and attributes. Right? Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says فَالْمُشَبِّهُ يَعْبُدُ صَنَمًا Someone who likens Allah to his creation which we don't do my brothers and my sisters he eventually will end up what? Worshipping an idol. Because the way the idol came about my brothers and my sisters was Quraysh or those who came before them they would have this idea about how Allah Azza wa looks and then they would what, depict him in the form of a sanam, a statue or an idol. Sahih? And then he says وَالْمُعَطِّلُ Someone who completely Right? Removes the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Ya'budu Adaman. He ends up worshipping nothing. Wal-Muwahidu Ya'budu ilahan wahidan samada. As for the Muwahid, the one who singles out Allah Azza wa Jal, he worships al-Wahid and al-Samad. How many are we on? Three, right? Number four, my brothers and my sisters. Without having an aqidah, a belief, my brothers and my sisters, right, that is valid in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it could be that all of your hard good deeds, my brothers and my sisters, are not accepted. 
And I'll give you guys the example of what Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala, what Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned. It says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَوْ أَنَّ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مِثْلَ أُحْدٍ ذَهَبَا ثُمَّ أَنْفَقَهُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مَا قَبِلَ اللَّهُ مِنُّ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ My brothers and sisters, the issue of Al-Qadr. What does Qadr mean? Huh? What does Qadr mean, brothers? It's, one, it's from one of the six articles of faith, right? Huh? Ahsant. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. This is one creedal aspect of many. Agreed? This is one creedal aspect of many. We mentioned that it's one article from the six articles of faith. Sah? Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is saying, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ he swears by Allah, by the one who my soul is in his hand. لو أن لأحدكم مثل أحد ذهبا. Have you guys ever seen Uhud, a mountain of Uhud? For those who have gone to Umrah, you visit Jabal Rumat, where the battle of Uhud took place, right? And then the guide always points out there's a huge mountain there, Uhud. He says, if you have a mountain of Uhud of such, right, in gold, which you then give to charity, it will not be accepted from him حتى يؤمنه. Until he believes in the Qadar. Subhanallah. So this is why here we're being encouraged now to learn about a Muslim's belief system. Right? Also Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to the Prophets, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْمَلُونَ And if they commit shirk, my brothers and my sisters, whatever they used to do will become void. Right? So I, again, it's important for one now to learn about that which is correct in terms of his belief. Also, directly, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَئِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ You, O oh Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest man to ever walk on the face of this earth, You, O oh Muhammad, if you commit shirk, all of your actions will become what? No. It'll become void. By the way, what does shirk mean, brothers and sisters? This is the greatest sin. It's more greater than murder. It's more greater than what? Uh, riba, and zina, and so on and so forth. Musawatu ghayrillahi billahi fi Allah. It is to attribute that which is exclusive to Allah, to Abad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. The next point, my brothers and my sisters, not embracing the aqidah that is required of us, my brothers and my sisters, may well be the reason why we are thrown into the hellfire. Right. We know the famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said. And the Muslims are going to what? Split into 73 sects. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all of them are in the hellfire except one. Who is this group, my brothers and my sisters, when he was asked, اليوم أصحابي, That which I am upon today and my companions. This, my brothers and my sisters, is an encouragement for us to try our utmost best, right? To do what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done, and what the companions came with. Right? We try to imitate them. Right? We go through the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. How did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wake up? Right? What did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do when he entered into the bathroom? Like every step that we take, every move that we make, we try to make sure that this is in line with what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions came with. And by that, we increase the chances of entering into Al Jannah. Right? It is their understanding, my brothers and my sisters, that we want to live with when navigating and maneuvering around, right? What we have today. Right? This is why, when it comes to how we practice our religion, my brothers and my sisters, we look at the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah 
Upon whose understanding? Naam. The three golden generations. Who are these three golden generations? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, Khairukum, Qarni, Thumma Ladheen Yalunum, Thumma Ladheen Yalunum. The best generation is my generation and those who came after them and those who came after them. Huh? They are referred to as what? As Salaf. And when I use this term, I'm not speaking about people that are currently breathing today. I'm speaking about what? The three golden generations of the past. It's their understanding that we are in need of when it comes to understanding our religion. Having said that, my brothers and my sisters, when it comes to the four madahib, are we against them? Right? By the way, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, he met, right? Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That's reported by Ibn Kathir and others. Right? Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alayhi, was from the Tabi'u Tabi'in. Or Atba'u Tabi'in. Right? And the other two, my brothers and my sisters, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed, they wouldn't fall under the three golden generations. However, they were great a'imma. These four, when it comes to fiqh, in taking that journey and understanding Islamic jurisprudence, right? And there's no contradiction between the two. Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? Having said that, my brothers and my sisters, and I'm going to keep repeating this, we are not walking away today believing that we have some sort of green card now to enter into Al-Jannah. Right? We're trying to learn as much as we can in order to get closer to Allah Azza wa so that we can enter into Al-Jannah. Right? Also, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentions in regards to what I was speaking about earlier in following the three golden generations. He says, وَمَذْهَبُ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ مَذْهَبٌ قَدِيمٌ مَعْرُوفٌ The position of the people of the Sunnah and Jama'ah is a very old belief. It's not something that I'm personally coming with. قَبْلَ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ اللَّهُ أَبَا حَنِيفَةَ وَمَالِكًا وَالشَّافِعِي وَأَحْمَدٍ Right? Well before Allah Azza wa Jal created the four great Imams. فَإِنَّهُ مَذْهَبُ الصَّحَابَةِ It is the madhab of the Sahaba. أَلَّذِينَ تَرَقَّوهُ عَنْ نَبِيهِمْ That which they took from their Prophet. Right? Why am I mentioning this my brothers and my sisters? When we study this manzoma, Ibn Taymiyyah, well you know the manzoma has been ascribed to him and there's a different opinion as to whether it is his or whether it's not. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ If we go off with the view that it is his, he mentions right at the end, that whatever I'm mentioning to you guys is not something that is exclusive to me. Right? This is the belief of the four great Imams and so on and so forth. And last but not least, my brothers and my sisters, before I start the um, the mandoma, the poem, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it came to the belief system of a Muslim, it would irritate him if it was opposed. Simply because of how serious it is. Right? We know through a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kharaja Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa nahnu natanaza'u fil qadar. Right? Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one time he said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered upon us, and we were arguing about al qadar. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this. فَغَضِبَ حَتَّ حَمَرَّ وَجْهُهُ He became angry to the point that his face became red. What does that show us, my brothers and my sisters, that the aqeed as a light matter? It's an extremely, extremely important. Right? And then he turned to us, he said, ثُمَّ أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْنَا فَقَالَ أَبِهَاذَا أُمِرْتُمْ Is this what you are commanded with? أَوْ بِهَاذَا أُرْسِلْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ or is this why I was sent to you? When it comes to the aqeer, you begin to dispute and argue amongst yourselves. And then he said, the people before you, they were destroyed simply because they started arguing about these things. Right? عَزَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ لَا تَنَازَعُوا فِيهِ Right? I say to you, and I want you guys to agree to what I'm saying and to fulfill this commandment that you do not dispute about these things. 
Mm. Also one time, subhanAllah, in the time of Abdullah ibn Umar, right? Yahya ibn Ya'mar and also Abdurrahman al-Himyari, who were from the Tabi'een. They went to the Kaaba. The narrator says, either it was for Hajj or for Umrah, right? And they said to Abdullah ibn Umar upon running into him, إِنَّهُ قَدْ ظَهَرَ قِبَلَنَا نَاسٌ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Indeed, there has appeared a group of people who recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَيَتَقَفَّرُونَ الْعِلْمِ And they claim to have knowledge. And then he mentioned about them, right? That يَزْعُمُونَ أَن, يزعمون أن لَا قَدَرْ وَأَنَّ الْأَمْرَ أُنُفْ they claim the following, my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to now demonstrate it, right? This group of people that appeared in the time of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and huma, and this really, really upset him because they began to change what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa came with. Right? Right? يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ أُنُفْ They would claim, huh? I'm going to drop this to make a point. The phone. I dropped the phone, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know that the phone has been dropped until after it has been dropped. Right? And the issues of Qadr, my brothers and my sisters, is extremely, extremely important and relevant, especially in today's day and age as well. Directly linked to the issues of atheism, where one now begins to completely deny Allah Azza wa Jal. Why certain things take place, and if there is really a God, then... You can see that the topic, what? It eventually comes back to the issues of Al-Qadr. So when some of these topics are taught, it should be tweaked in a way that is relevant in order to tackle some of the ideologies that are currently rampant in today's day and age, such as atheism. Right? So these corrupt beliefs were there. And as time went on, Shaytan just looked for different ways to package it in order to cause people to go astray. And atheism, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of that. Again, importance of aqidah, my brothers and my sisters. So, ala kulli hal, upon hearing this, you know what Ibn Umar said to Abdurrahman al-Himyari and also Yahya ibn Ya'mar? When you see these people, فَإِذَا لَقِيتَ أُولَائِكَ فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ Tell them, أَنِّي بَرِيءٌ I am free from them. أَنَا بَرِيءٌ مِنْهُمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ بُرْعَاءٌ مِنِّي And they are what? Free from me. And then he mentioned what I said earlier, where he swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the one whose soul is in my hand, right? If they were now to spend in charity, that which is equivalent to a mountain of gold like Uhud, it will not be accepted from them until what? They believe in Al-Qadr. Tayyip. To proceed now, my brothers and my sisters, we'll get straight into the poem. Right, earlier I kind of touched on whether this uh, manduma, this poem, is in fact the poem of Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi. Right? Some say it's not. Some say it is. Whether it is or not, my brothers and my sisters, and whatever the case may be, right? Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi has other statements, whether it may be in the Majmu' al-Fatawa or some of his other books that are exactly in line with what we're going to be taking, inshallah ta'ala, in this manduma. Okay, it's a very nice short poem where we learn a little bit about our aqidah, right, as a Muslim. So, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, for those who don't know him, does anyone know his name? What's his name? Huh? Ahmed Tqiyuddin? Allah Hidik. Is that his name? Huh? It is Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam. Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam. Right? His nickname is what? Taqiyuddin. His nickname is Taqiyuddin. And Taymiyyah, my brothers and my sisters, believe it or not, is actually what? A woman's name. It is a woman's name, subhanAllah. Right? It's attributed to his grandmother. Hmm? Or should I say great-grandmother? The Arabs, when they say grandmother, they mean by it anyone... Fi wa ma'ala, right? And she was a righteous woman. And subhanAllah, the whole family eventually ended up being attributed 
to this lady, even though, right, there was many scholars within the family. Another great scholar within the family is Al-Majd, the grandfather of Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi. His name is Abdul Salam. Are you brothers and sisters with me? What does that show you? That it could be whatever it might be, or whoever it might be. Because of the virtue that it becomes associated to, it ends up dragging everything else with it as well. Right? And this is, and I don't want to of course compare this situation with the Quran, but the notion that I just mentioned right now, whatever the Quran touches, it makes it great. Agreed? Just to show you that if something is great, my brothers and my sister, or one does a noble thing, he ends up dragging the things around it towards his direction. If you look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he became the greatest of the prophets. When you look at J- Angel Jibra'il, he became the greatest of the angels. When you look at the greatest of places, which is what Mecca, he became the greatest of the places because of the Quran that came down upon it. Huh? And he can become the greatest of the people as well, my brothers and my sisters. If you learn the book of Allah Azza wa you surround yourself with khair, you will see a lot of things gravitating towards you. Hmm? So he says, يَا سَائِلِي عَنْ مَذْهَبِي وَعَقِيدَتِي رُزِقَ الْهُدَى مَنْ لِلْهِدَايَةِ يَسْأَلُ He says, O oh you who asks about my aqidah, right, and that which I follow, my madhab. رُزِقَ الْهُدَى مَنْ لِلْهِدَايَةِ يَسْأَلُ The person who's looking for guidance, my brothers and my sisters, right, if he searches for it, he goes out his way now to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will eventually what? Guide him. You guys heard the story of Salman al-Farisi, right? He went from one religion to another and eventually found Islam. If you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you really badly want something, there is no reason as to why Allah azza wa jal should reject you. You're sincere in that. Allah says, إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا Allah sees that goodness in your heart, He'll give it to you. Right? And from the ways to really show Allah Azza wa Jal that you badly want guidance is to call on to Him, to ask Him constantly. Right? What are we taught in Surah Al-Fatiha? We may read it, but we might not necessarily internalize it. إِهْدِنَا إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ 17 times a day. Ya Allah, guide me to the right path. Right? Even there is a dua that is highly uh, preferable and advisable that an individual, you know, asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his dua because of the meaning that it carries. Right? Oh Allah, show me the truth and grant me the ability to follow it. And show me the falsehood and that which goes against the truth and allow me now to stay away from it. Right? And of course you have the excessive dua that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make all the time. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik or thabbit qulubana ala ta'atik or ala deenik or turn of the hearts, keep my hearts firm upon your religion. Right? So he says, my brothers and my sisters, يَا سَائِلِي عَنْ مَذْهَبِي وَعَقِيدَتِي Oh, you who asks about my madhab and my aqidah. I thought I mentioned it earlier, but I didn't. What is the meaning of aqidah, my brothers and my sisters? Is that which one ties to his heart. Right? In terms of religion. مَا رَبَطَ الْإِنسَانُ وَقَلْبَهُ عَلَيْهِ دِيَانَةً That which an individual ties to his heart in terms of religion. Right? It says, رُزِقَ الْهُدَى مَنْ لِلْهِدَايَةِ يَسْأَلُوا Right? And we've touched on a little bit. There are different types of hidayah. Different types of hidayah. The first type that I'm going to mention, my brothers and my sisters, different types of guidances that I think is worth mentioning. <coughs> this is a general type of guidance. وَهُوَ أَوْ وَهِيَ هِدَايَةُ الْمَخْلُقَاتِ الَّتِي Guiding the creation to that which is going to rectify the dunya. Normally, under this couplet, my brothers and my sisters, there would only be two types that are mentioned. Right? I'm going to mention four very, very quickly, inshallah ta'ala. And these are general types of guidances, right? 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the animals and a young child, my brothers and my sisters, to be able to feed itself, right? Who taught the child, my brothers and my sisters, right? The ability to suckle. Who taught him that and he just came into this world? Did the mother start teaching him? Like this is the hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this individual or upon this child. And likewise, the animals, as soon as they come into this world, they're able what? Huh? To feed themselves. They're able to quench their thirst. Allah Azza wa Jal grants them a guidance. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, is hidayah to ahli al-jannati ila al-jannati wa nari ila nar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding the people of jannah to the jannah and the people of the hellfire to the hellfire. Number three, my brothers and my sisters, and number four are very, very important. And it'll help us put things into perspective. Right? This is now the third one, and then you have the fourth one. Pay attention, my brothers and my sisters. Right? There are two verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing his prophet. Number one. When the Prophet Sallallahu uncle passed away, right? A verse came down. Does anyone know the verse that came down? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tried to guide him, right? This is an uncle, my brothers and my sisters, that used to defend the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and helped him in his cause, in his da'wah. Now, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Inna ka la tahdi man ahbabt." You, O Muhammad, you do not guide the people that you love, but it is Allah Azza wa Jal that guides the people. But then in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى إِشْ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Or إِلَى الزِّرَاط, right? Different qira'ah. You, O Muhammad, you're going to guide the people to the right path. How do you reconcile between the two? How do you reconcile between the two, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? Ahsant. Zakallah khair. You are able to direct the people to that which they should follow. To Al-Islam, to what the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. Right? You can show the people. However, can you grab that guidance and place it in people's hearts? You can't. This is something that even some of the prophets couldn't do, my brothers and my sisters. Some of the prophets couldn't do this, my brothers and my sisters. You have the wife of who? Nuh. You also have the wife of? Lot. There's a mention in which surah? Huh. Surah At-Tahreem, is it that? The two wives who did not embrace Al-Islam. They didn't accept. In fact, they were upon disbelief, subhanAllah. Likewise, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he tells his son, Ya bunayya rkam ma'ana, or irkab ma'ana, different qira'ah. Son, get on the, get on the ship. Qala sa'awi la jablin ya'asimuni minna. Don't worry, dad, I'm going to go all the way on top of the mountain and I'll be saved from this flood. Was he saved? No, he wasn't. Prophets couldn't save them. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he talks about the different traps and tricks that he has up his sleeve, yani the devil. Huh? Very, very quickly. The first, he tries to get you to do kufr. Number two, he can't get you to do kufr, he tries to get you to do what? Bid'ah. Number three, he can't get you to do these two. He now moves on to what? Major sins. Number four, he can't get you to do major sins, my brothers and my sisters. What does he trap you with? Minor sins. He can't get you to do any of these four. You are a top guy in the eyes of the devil now. He tries to busy you with number five, which is that which is less beneficial from that which is more beneficial. That's five. And number six, Ibn Qayyim mentions, this is something that even the prophets had a lot of trouble with. And they couldn't prevent it. Using your family, my brothers and my sisters now, the devil uses your family in order to misguide you. Or to lead you astray. Or to harm you. Right? Mocking you, ah, oh, Mr. Righteous, huh? Yesterday you were doing all this haram and now you want to tell me what is right and what is wrong? Sounds a little bit like Fir'aun. You know Fir'aun, what he said to Musa? Huh? When Musa came to him with, <laughs> when Musa came to him with 
the da'wah to al-Islam, you know what he said to him? الذي, you, you, you're a kafir, bro. You. You did all of that stuff and now what? You're from the kafir. <laughs> Allah musta'an. So my brothers and my sisters, right? Showing the people the right path. However, the guidance who places it inside of the heart, my brothers and my sisters, that's none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one has the capability to, right, insert that guidance into your heart other than Allah jalla And then he concludes the line of poetry by saying what? Yes, alu. I think this is very, very important to ask my brothers and my sisters, right? To pursue that guidance. And you can only get the answers to your questions if you ask. To remove that ignorance that you are suffering from. That's why one time my brothers and my sisters, in the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a man who uh, was struck in the head, right? Right? And when he was struck in the head, my brothers and my sisters, he passed out. Upon waking up, he woke up in the state of Janaba. So he asked around him, what should I do? They all told him, you need to go and have a bath. A purification bath. You need to do ghusl. He ended up doing the ghusl. He ended up what? Dying. The Messenger of Allah became furious. He said, Qataluhu, qatalahum Allah. They killed them. May Allah killed them. Right? And then he said to them, my brothers and my sisters, why didn't they ask if they didn't know indeed the cure to ignorance my brothers and my sisters is to ask it's a sickness my brothers and my sisters to be ignorant and you can only uplift that from yourself if you ask and then he goes on to say my brothers and my sisters اسمع كلام محقق في قوله لا ينثني عنه Right? Listen to the speech of the one who has asserted the truth. Right? You may think to yourself, my brothers and my sisters, here, if this is in fact the statement of Ibn Rahmatullahi Alayhi, it comes across a little bit arrogant. I found the truth. This is the truth, the only truth, and nothing but the truth. Sahih? And that is because, my brothers and my sisters, he exerted all of his efforts in order to try and find that which was apparent to him to be the truth. Right? And I read out was in, or what you can find in Majmu' al-Fatawa. Perhaps it will put things into perspective. ما جمعت إلا عقيلة السلف الصالح جميعهم ليس للإمام أحمد اختصاص بهذا. He said, right? After putting down a belief system for those who asked him. He wrote it down for them and he sent it to them. Whatever now I've compiled here, my brothers and my sisters, he says, right? After trying to find the correct answers and to find that which, right, is in line with the truth, my brothers and my sisters, he says, this is not specific and exclusive to Imam Ahmad, rahmatullahi alayhi. Right? والإمام أحمد إنما هو مبلغ العلم الذي جاء به النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Rather, Imam Ahmad رحمة الله عليه is someone who conveys that which was sent down upon the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Right? And then he says, and this is a very, very important aspect of how we navigate and maneuver around that which we may be challenged with. He says, ولو قال أحمد من تلقاء نفسه ما لم يجئ به الرسول لم نقبله وهذه عقيلة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم if Imam Muhammad رحمة الله عليه came with something from his own accord with regards to what a Muslim needs to believe we wouldn't accept it unless it came from Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم right up until he goes on to say my brothers and my sisters hmm قد أمهلت كل من خالفني في شيء منها I've given anyone who differs with me on that which I have put forward, right? Three years, he says. Right? فَإِنْ جَاءَ بِحَرْفٍ وَاحِدٍ عَنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ الْمُفَضَّلَةِ أَوْ الْقُرُونِ الثَّلَاثَةِ يُخَالِفُ مَا ذَكَرْتُهُ فَأَنَا أَرْجِعُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ Three years you have, please correct me. This is the humility of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi. He tried to find the right answer, right? 
And then he said to his opponents, three years. I'm more than happy to revisit any of these positions. I'm more than happy to revisit any of these positions that I have, right? So I can then what? Look into it more or perhaps even retract. Hmm? And then he says, وَعَلَيَّ أَنْ آتِيَ بِنُقُولِ جَمِيعَ الطَّوَائِفِ عَنِ الْقُرُونِ الثَّلَاثَةِ يُوَافِقُ مَا ذَكَرْتُهُ Right? So my brothers and my sisters, just to give you guys some sort of confidence with regards to what we're studying, it didn't just come out of thin air. Right? He's saying what I'm about to go through, right? That which I'm about to relate right now, it's not specific to Imam Ahmed. This was the belief of Imam Ahmed, but even then, it's not actually specific to him. Right? Because what Imam Ahmed came with, he says, it is that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. Right? And this is what we want to embrace as Muslims with regards to one's belief system. لا ينثني عنه ولا يتبدل. طيب. Then he goes on to say, my brothers and my sisters, this is now which line of poetry? For those who have it. What are we on? Huh? We're on line number three, guys. That's considered one and then two and hakala. Right? He says, حب الصحابة كلهم لي مذهب ومودة القربى بها توثل The love of the companions is what I follow. Right here he said حب الصحابة All of the companions There's an إضافة here for those who know the Arabic language All of the companions Loving them is my belief as a Muslim ومودة القربى بها توثل Loving Right the relatives of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a good deed that I seek a means of tawassal to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I'll explain inshaAllah Ta'ala in a moment what that actually means. Right? Who's the Sahabi, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? He said, anyone that saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that it? This is a deficient ta'rif, huh? definition. And then he died, and he didn't die upon deviance. Huh? Anyone else? He says, anyone that met the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best ta'rif, the best definition, my brothers and my sisters, is the definition of Ibn Hajar. Right? He says, every person who met the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and believed in him. Because there are those who met the Messenger Salah, but did they, did they actually believe in him? You guys bringing into Al Islam the hypocrites, guys, huh? Come on, my Yasruh. Tayyib. Wa also what? Mat al Islam. And he also what? Died upon Al Islam. It could be someone that met the Messenger Salah, believed in him, and then he apostated. Is he now a companion, my brothers and my sisters? Is he a companion? No. Hi, Jama'a. The scholars are different into two. Huh? Right? He met the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believed in him, but then died upon Kufr. Is he a Sahabi? No. He loses, he loses the privilege of being called a Sahabi. Why if now my brothers and my sisters, uh, he met the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He believed in him. Right? And then he apostated while the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive. And then re-entered into Islam after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Does he keep the privilege of being referred to as a companion? There's a difference of opinion but the Sahih Qawl is that he does. Huh? طيب. This is why my brothers and my sisters yani What we're just taking now is extremely important I'll tell you guys why Because the way the companions are dealt with in our religion Is very different to everyone else The Sahaba they have a virtue And they have a grace my brothers and my sisters That is unparalleled to anyone else 
Are you guys with me? Right? They cannot be compared to anyone. Right? That is outside the realm of being a companion. So I'm going to inshallah ta'ala mention that there are three rights when it comes to the companions. Three rights. The last thing that we want is you guys to start speaking badly about the companions and jeopardize your akhirah, my brothers and my sisters. Right? It's important that we mention this because you're going to go online and you'll see people insulting Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, insulting Umar, Uthman, wa hakada. Right? Number one, my brothers and my sisters, salamatu qulubihim wa alsinatihim li ashabi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Not holding any negativity, right? In your heart towards the companions and not, right? Being vile towards them. The way of the believer, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, is وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ إِشْ Those who came after them, يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ From the traits of these believers, my brothers and my sisters, is that they make dua for those who preceded them in iman. Ya Allah, forgive them. Right? Those who preceded us in faith. Right? Making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive them. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly and explicitly mentioned, my brothers and my sisters, لا تسبوا أصحابي فوالذي نفسي بيده لو أن أحدكم أنفق مثل أحد ذهبا ما بلغ مد أحد ولا نصيفة. He swore by Allah. Right? You swore by Allah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not insult my companions. And then he swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to spend, right? If you were to spend in gold the size of Uhud, my brothers and my sisters, you will not be able to come anywhere near them. Anywhere near them, my brothers and my sisters, in simple terms. Right? They are a group of people, my brothers and my sisters, that no one will ever be like because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them and he gave them tazkiyah. Right? And also when you think about it, my brothers and my sisters, would you agree that insulting the companions is in essence insulting Islam? Why? Because they witnessed the wahi, the revelation coming down. They carried it and then they went and spread it. Learn about them, my brothers and my sisters, what they went through. And wallahi, you're going to take them as your role models. Today we hear about, we don't have any role models. Wallahi, this is kadib, this is a lie. We have enough examples and role models amongst the companions in how to live our lives. When it comes to courage, when it comes to being truthful, when it comes to submission, when it comes to humility, we have that amongst companions. How to deal with our wives, how to deal with our children. We have all of that, my brothers and my sisters, within the companions. Right? Because we're short on time, my brothers and my sisters, like I said before, I asked you guys to learn about what? After we leave today, the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. I also am going to ask you guys now to learn about something else, and that is the lives of these companions. You want your iman also to go up, my brothers and my sisters, learn about their lives. Right. In just about every aspect of life, they were role models in that. And where did they take this from? None other than the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right. Even though he had so much going on, he still gave time to the people. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, the right that they have over us is التراضي والترحم عليهم التراضي والترحم عليهم To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with them. رضي الله عنهم Whenever the names are mentioned, what do we say? رضي الله عنهم We ask Allah to have mercy upon them. This is the rights that they have upon us. Number three, my brothers and my sisters, الكف والسكوت عما شجر بينهم it's from the signs of someone who follows the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To withhold, to bite our tongues from the things that happened between the companions. Certain times of the years, my brothers and my sisters, you will hear certain individuals, right, upping huh, what they begin to say about the companions. 
right? Are you brothers and sisters with me? Huh? This happened, that happened amongst the companions and this, that. What we believe, my brothers and my sisters, as individuals who are trying to follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, there were issues that happened between the companions, right? Like the two companions, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and also who? Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. However, is it our place now to start criticizing this one and criticizing that one? No. Right? Even though we believe that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was more correct. Having said that, that shouldn't take away from one accepting that Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that he was someone that used to write down the revelation with his pen. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, my beloved brothers and sisters, he says, الأخبار التي وردت في الفتن جلها كذب. A lot of the reports that you will find regarding, right, the issues that happened between the companions, my brothers and my sisters, right, a lot of it are lies. وبعضها زيد فيه ونقص. And some reports have had things added onto it. A bit like Chinese whispers. What happens with Chinese whispers, my brothers and my sisters? Uh, it goes from one person to another and then things are added and then the guy might forget and so on and so forth. And sometimes things are taken out. وَمَا صَحَّ مِنْهَا And whatever is valid and authentic فَالصَّحَابَةُ فِيهِ مُجْتَهِدُونَ مَأْجُورُونَ Right? The Sahaba, my brothers and my sisters, are mujtahidun. We've heard the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? إِذَا اجْتَهَدَ الْحَاكِمُ فَأَخْطَأَ فَلُوْ أَجَرْ فَإِذَا أَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجَرَانَ if the Hakim now, the ruler, he tries to pass a ruling and he's incorrect in that. Then he gets one reward. Or the Mufti, right? The Qadi, the judge and so on and so forth. He gets one reward. If he gets it right, then he gets two rewards. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said this. And the Sahaba, all of them are brothers and sisters in terms of the decisions and Actions that they had to take, they are mujtahidun in that. They strive to get the right answer, and they are between either what, either correct or mistaken, but either way they are getting reward. So beware, my brothers and my sisters, to ever speak ill of any of the companions. Right? Also, Muhammad ibn Sirin, who was from the students of Abu Huray radiallahu ta'ala, you know what he said? هاجت الفتنة وأصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عشرة آلاف فما حضرها منهم مئة. He says when the fitan that happened it reached boiling point, right? The companions, my brothers and my sisters, they were ten thousand, and those who attended some of these battles that took place, right? He says a hundred, بل لم يبلغ ثلاثين. But rather he says it doesn't even reach thirty of them. Right. Even when they say about Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and they make all of these claims about her, right? When she went out, and I know I'm speaking in very coded language here, a very summarized version of it, right? She never went out in order to claim rulership, my brothers and my sisters. She wanted, in fact, to rectify between the two groups that were there. Now, when it comes to وَمَوَدَّةُ الْقُرْبَى بِهَا أَتَوَسَّلُوا Loving the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a good deed that I see closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with. Right? When we say the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my brothers and my sisters, who comes under it? These four, my brothers and my sisters. The family of Ali, right? Who comes under that? Hassan and Hussein, right? Al Ali, anyone here from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family? We have one brother. I'll see you, Abdullah here. Is there a difference of opinion in regards to the lineage? Ah, طيب. Al Ali, Al Abbas, also the family of Al Abbas. 
Number three, Alu Ja'far. And then Alu Aqil. Right? When we say Alu Bayt, we intend by it these four that we just mentioned. And we know, my brothers and my sisters, through the text, right? Through the text, that the Ahlul Bayt or the Ahlul Bayt, they have a privilege. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically made mention of them to be safeguarded, to be protected, right? To be treated with kindness and so on and so forth. Then comes my brothers and my sisters, the controversial topic of Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. What is it that we should believe with regards to Hussein? Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi says the following. I keep mentioning Ibn Taymiyyah because this manduma, this poem, has been attributed to Ibn Taymiyyah. As I mentioned before, right, that which Ibn Taymiyyah mentions in this manduma or that which is attributed to him, you can find it elsewhere. Right? Sometimes we are made to look like as if we hate the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family. Right? My brothers and my sisters, no, absolutely not. Right? If you deny that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has specifically made mention of and you negate it and you claim complete otherwise, then my brothers and my sisters can actually take you out of the fold of Islam. Right? Ibn Taymiyyah says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ قَتَلَ الْحُسَيْنَ أَوْ أَعَانَ عَلَىٰ قَتْلِهِ أَوْ رَضِيَ بِذَلِكَ فَعَلَيْهِ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ لَا يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ صَرْفًا وَلَا عَدْلًا Whoever killed Hussein or aided and assisted in him being killed or is pleased with it, then upon him is the curse of Allah Azza wa the angels and everyone else and Allah Azza wa will not accept anything from him. Right? So we love, and in fact, we have to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inni tarikun fikum al-thaqalain. Ahadumma akbar min al-akhar. I leave with you these two great things. One is bigger than the other. Kitabullah, the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, حَبْلٌ مَمْدُودٌ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ It is a rope from the heavens all the way to the earth. يعني hold on to it. And then also he said, وَعِتْرَتِي أَهْلُ بَيْتِي Right? My family, the Ahlul Bayt. In another hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Right? أُذَكِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَهْلِ بَيْتِي I remind you of my family. I remind you of my family. And I remind you of my family. In another narration, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَقَرَابَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ أَنْ أَصِلَ مِنْ قَرَابَتِي Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, keeping ties with the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more beloved to me than keeping ties with my own family. Mm. To conclude this point, my brothers and my sisters, I'm going to mention what the Shaykh Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shalqiti mentioned. Right? He says, He says, some people, بعض الناس, تجد, right, عندهم, أن آل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والناس عندهم سواء. Some people, my brothers and my sisters, he says, that when it comes to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's family and everyone else, they see them as equals. Right? They see them as equals. بل إنه ربما يرمي بالكلمة وتقول له هذا شريف من آل بيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيقول لك لا شرف إلا بالتقوى. I think it's very very important, my brothers and my sisters. Right? It's a point of contention. You say to him, أخي, this is a person from the family of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then he says, أخي, لا شرف إلا بالتقوى. One is only honorable if he has a تقوى. يعني downplaying the emphasis that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم gave to the kindness that one should show to the آل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Right? And he says, حتى تتمنى إنك ما قلت أن هذا شريف to the point that one begins to wish that <laughs> you didn't even, he didn't even say that this person is شريف. Right? 
And then the Sheikh goes on to say, نعم, لا شرف إلا بالتقوى, صحيح, one, right? Will not be honorable except with the taqwa. However, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to us specifically and explicitly that their lineage is honorable. That their lineage is honorable. Right? وَهَذَا أَصْلٌ شَرْعِي Whether you like it, whether you are satisfied with it or not, this is the rights that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about with regards to what? Ali بَيْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَإِنْ أَكْرَمْتَهُ فَأَنْتَ الْكَرِيمُ He says if you honor an individual who is from the family of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are an honorable individual. طيب. Having said all of that, my brothers and my sisters, how do we reconcile between everything? We may see an individual who's from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family and then he's insulting the companions. Right? Just because now he's from the al Bayt, from the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does that mean he's entitled to go and do whatever he wishes? La. Right? Yes, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave emphasis with regards to the lineage and how honorable it is and noble. However, my brothers and my sisters, that's not going to get you into Al-Jannah. It's one thing us being taught how to treat someone from Ali Bayti Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, your lineage is not going to get you into Al-Jannah. We need to be balanced here, my brothers and my sisters. That's why the poet he says, لَعَمْرُكَ مَا الْإِنسَانُ إِلَّا بِدِينِهِ فَلَا تَتْرُكِ التَّقْوَى اتِّبَاعًا أو فَلَا تَتْرُكِ التَّقْوَى اتِّكَالًا عَلَى النَّسَبِ Right? That which is going to benefit you when you enter into your grave, my brothers and my sisters, is not your nasab. Is not your lineage. Or how powerful your tribe was back home. لَعَمْرُكَ مَا الْإِنسَانُ إِلَّا بِدِينِهِ فَلَا تَتْرُكِ التَّقْوَى اتِّكَالًا عَلَى النَّسَبِ Don't leave of a taqwa, my brothers and my sisters, because you think that your lineage is going to save you. And then look what he says. لَقَدْ رَفْعَ الْإِسْلَامُ سَلْمَانَ فَارِسٍ Right? وَوَضَعَ الشِّرْكُ وَوَضَعَ الشِّرْكُ الشَّقِيَّ أَبَا لَهْبِ Salman al-Farisi, was he from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi family, my brothers and my sisters? He was a Persian. But Allah Azza wa Jal raised him because of what? Because of Islam. Right? Then you also have my brothers and my sisters, Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did his lineage benefit him, my brothers and my sisters? He says, وَوَضَعَ الشِّرْكُ الشَّقِيَّ أَبَا لَهَبِي Right? He in fact became humiliated and his lineage was not able to save him. Right? Allah, I remember, subhanAllah, I was in East London. I remember exactly where he was. And a man came up to me and he said, me being from the Prophet Sallallahu family, is that enough for me now to enter into a Jannah? Huh? What's the answer, brothers and sisters? No. We have to honor people who are from the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shaqiti, when he sees someone from the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stops whatever he's doing. and goes and kisses him on the forehead. I'm not asking you guys to kiss me on the forehead, huh? Let me get out of here alive, brothers. Huh? Point is, we're learning here what is required for us to believe so we don't go into extremes and likewise don't fall short. Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? Fortunately, as time went on, right, the rights of the al bayt huh, have been downplayed and sidelined as if it has no significance whatsoever. While at the same time, your lineage is not going to save you, my brothers and my sisters. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْخَاكُمْ The most honorable from amongst you is the one who has the most taqwa. Also the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَمَنْ أَبْطَأَ بِعَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ Whoever is slow in coming with righteous deeds, his lineage is not going to come or is not going to rush right to save him. Hmm. Are you guys tired? Huh? Are you guys writing down the notes? Huh? I can see some of you guys are writing. You know the poet, my brothers and my sisters, he says, لا بد للطالب من كناش يكتب فيه راكبا أو ماشا It is a must that the talib, that the students, he, crab, he carries with him 
scrap paper. He writes when he rides and he writes when he walks. Abu Taymiyyah came along in the year 2020, I believe, and decided to change up or tweak this line of poetry so it can be relevant to our lives. No one carries scrap paper here today, right? But we carry our phones and our gadgets. So I changed it to, instead of saying kunash, which means scrap paper, لا بد لطالب من أيباد يكتب فيه راكبا أو ماشين. Fresh way of saying iPad, right? So it rhymes within the line of poetry. You carry with yourself these gadgets and your iPads, and you write down these notes. Well, like some of the notes that I'm sharing with you guys, my brothers and my sisters, I came across it maybe seven, eight years ago, and I saved it on this Apple iPhone. And then he says, وَلِكُلِّهِمْ قَدْرٌ وَفَضْلٌ صَاطِعٌ Every single one of them, my brothers and my sisters, has a status and a shining excellence. Right? لَكِنَّمَ الصِّدِّيقُ مِنْهُمْ أَفْضَلُ But before we uh, go into this line of poetry, my brothers and my sisters, I forgot to mention that which relates to At-Tawassul. At-Tawassul, my brothers and my sisters, it is to seek a means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, right? We can do tawassul. We can do what? At tawassul. Which is to seek a means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to hope for our dua now to get accepted. And there are three types. Number one, through the names. Ya Sami' Ya Basir. Mention the names of Allah Azza wa Jal when making a dua. Number two, very, very quickly, through righteous deeds. You guys know the, th- the three that got stuck in the cave? You guys heard the story of the three that got stuck in the cave? And then they said the only thing that we can do is make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal through our righteous deeds. And each one of them would make the dua, Ya Allah, have I done this sincerely for your sake? One of them, subhanAllah, my brothers and my sisters, was a man who was approached by his cousin. And his cousin needed a bit of money. Right? And he stipulated upon her that he would give her this loan and then when he was about to now commit a zina with his cousin, my brothers and my sisters, he wanted to take advantage of her, right? Using her to commit haram. She told him, don't open the seal except in the right way. Meaning through nikah and so on and so forth. Hmm? And then he held back and didn't commit the haram. Right. And then he gave her the money and he left. May dua to Allah Azza wa through this righteous deed. Ya Allah, have I done that for your sake? Meaning I left the haram. For your sake, then open the cave. A part of it would open. But they still weren't able to get out. And then the other two also mentioned their righteous deeds. Right. What does that show us, my brothers and my sisters? How can I make this relatable to the lives of many of us who are sitting here today? Right? Under your blanket, nobody's watching except Allah Azza wa Jal. It's times like that when you leave that which the shaitan is whispering to you to carry out, Allah Azza wa Jal will open doors. Here a bit of the cave opened up, right? Wallahi, it could be the reason why your life takes a turn for the better. And then the third, my brothers and my sisters, is making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal through, right, the dua, through the dua of a righteous man. This is exactly what Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu done. When there was a drought, he asked Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are three forms of tawassul that we find through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he done this through Yazid ibn Aswad who was a righteous man. For you to go up to a righteous man asking him now to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that make sense? No. So which one does the love that you have for Ahl Bayt and treating them kindly fall under? The first, the second or the third? Pay attention my brothers and sisters. I mentioned the love that you have for the Prophet's family and the kindness that you show them. You make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal 
asking Allah, Ya Allah, I ask you through these righteous deeds of me being kind towards al bayt right? And the love that I have for them. Huh? First, second or third? Hassantum. <laughs> And then it says, Every single one of them has a high status and a shining excellence in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst the companions. Right? From amongst the companions. However, there are some companions, my brothers and my sisters, that are more virtuous and more greater than others. Who is the greatest from amongst all of them? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. A companion that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked to lead in his lifetime. مُرُوا أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَلْيُصَلِّ بِالنَّاسِ hmm? Even one time the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم right was asked huh? أَيُّ النَّاسِ يَحَبُّ إِلَيْكَ Who from amongst the people is most beloved to you? Right? What do you think the answer was? Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها and then he was asked from amongst the men he said أَبُوهَا her father Right? And then he said Umar and so on and so forth. Hmm. And there's so many other narrations, my brothers and my sisters, even Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum, he says, Kunna nukhayyur bayna nas fi zaman nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa aba bakrin thumma umu khattab thumma uthman. Right? We used to hold preferences from amongst the companions and we would choose one over the other in terms of greatness and virtue. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu would always be what? The number one. Huh? Another narration, Kunna fi zaman in the la na'adilu bi Abi Bakrin ahada. Whenever you used to compare Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anu to anybody. Read up his seerah, my brothers and my sisters, and his life. That's the third thing I've mentioned to you guys. Number one was what? Learning the names of Allah. Number two was what? Huh? Learning about the companions. And number three, more specifically, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He didn't become the greatest of people, my brothers and my sisters, for no reason. Hmm. Even Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there's an authentic narration, my brothers and my sisters, right? He says, لا أوتي بأحد يفضلني على أبي بكر وعمر إلا ضربت حد المفتري. Right? If anyone is brought to me, preferring me over Abu Bakr and Umar, I would lash him, Right? And I would whip him the same way you whip somebody who fabricates and lies. Like, then he goes on to say, وَأَقُولُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ I say with regards to the Qur'an, يعني أنا أعتقد, right? I say, when it comes to the Qur'an, يعني the information that we are given in the Qur'an by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Right? I believe it. I reiterate it. I believe in it. Right? In terms of his ayat, verses, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about his names and his attributes in the manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent it out. Right? Are you brothers and sisters with me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Quran. Right? This is the speech of Allah Jalla fi Ula. Hmm? Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down in his Quran, we consider this to be what? His speech. Why is this important, my brothers and my sisters? To believe that the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his speech isn't actually created? Huh? Does anybody know? Huh? Ahsant. If we say that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created and we have the rest of his makhluqat as well, the rest of his creation, what are we really doing in essence? It's almost we what? Put the speech of Allah azza wa jal in par with all of the rest of his creation. And even when we scroll back, my brothers and my sisters, and we rewind how... This innovation now became widespread of Allah Azza wa Jal's speech being created. It was in order to 
place this created speech that they claim with one's aql, with one's intellect. Think about it, my brothers and my sisters. If you say that the Quran is created and you also have an intellect that is created, what have you done here? You've put it both on par with one another. Right? Isn't this a balwa that we have at this moment in time? Giving your intellect preference and precedence over what Allah Azza wa has sent down. Think about it. With a lot of these modern day ideologies. Huh? What makes the Quran different to your intellect? If both of them are created. This is why, if you guys may remember, huh? Right at the beginning, and I even said this today in the khutbah. Every modern day ideology or every narrative that people have created in order to structure one's life with, it's always going to be flawed. This is the state of everything that has been created. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is not created, it is divine. You will find flaws in all of these different modern day ideologies, my brothers and my sisters. There will be discrepancies, there will be contradictions. Right? And I like to repeat this all the line, all the time. Where do you draw the line with regards to what we should do and what we shouldn't do? Right? I'll say that again. Where do you draw the line with regards to what one should do and what one shouldn't do? And what is morally acceptable and what isn't morally acceptable? We live in a world, my brothers and my sisters, that is changing very, very quickly. What was perfectly acceptable maybe 50 years ago is no longer the case today. Sahih? You know, my brothers and my sisters, I sit with husbands and wives all the time. Arbitrating between them. Sometimes, and this is uh, for you guys who are looking to get married, huh? Pay attention, my brothers and my sisters. When I'm arbitrating between them, they've got problems between themselves, right? The husband says, I don't like the way she dresses when she goes outside. She turns around and she says, why is this guy being so harsh for? Why is he being so harsh? She then says about him, I don't like the fact that he has, right, interactions with the opposite gender via text message. They're texting each other all the time. He turns around and he says, Akhi, she's just a friend at work. Can you see problems are taking place within marriages? Where do you draw the line of what is acceptable and what is not? With regards to this world that is becoming more and more colorful all the time, my brothers and my sisters, right? This has been made acceptable. Hmm? One thing leads to another. And as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, لا يأتي زمان الذي بعده شر منه There doesn't come a time except the time that comes after is worse. These guys are saying love is love. What is preventing them from having love is love? Where do you draw the line with regards to what is acceptable and what is not? Hmm? This is why we can't accept, right? Or, what's the term that I'm looking for? Huh? Damn, this is something that we can't tolerate, nor can we what? Uh, no, there's another word. Hmm. There is no way that we can even accept that the Quran is on the same level as one's intellect or anything else that is what created. It is divine, it is perfect. Right? That leaves you, my brothers and my sisters, with no choice except to accept that there is a greater entity and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should take rules and regulations from. Otherwise, you will, my brothers and my sisters, have constant problems in your dealings, whether it may be with your wife, your family, and anyone else, whoever it might be. Right? The Quran is divine, it is perfect. Minhu bada, it started from Allah, and it will eventually go back to Allah. Azza wa Jal.
And then he says, my brothers and my sisters, وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأوله. I say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. Yani I believe in everything that Allah azza wa jal says, right? With regards to his names and his attributes. The previous line of poetry was more specific to the Quran being the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here my brothers and my sisters, the shaykh is referring to the names and attributes. Right? وَالْمُصْطَفَ الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ And when it comes to what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the guided prophet, right? Who guides us now to that which is, uh, to that which is uh, correct. And I don't start interpreting away, right? Or explaining away what Allah and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. In the Quran, my brothers and my sisters, we are going to find many names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are important principles to take into consideration. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any of his names and attributes, we do not do something called what? at tashbih Which means we don't similarize him to the creation. Right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْصُوتَتَانِ يُنْفِقُ كَيْفِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two outstretched, generous hands. Right? We do not similarize him to any of his creation. Right? We don't say that his attributes are like the attributes of so-and-so or whatever else it might be. Are you guys with me? We do not do also, my brothers and my sisters, something called ta'atil, which is to negate what Allah Azza wa Jalla said about himself. Nor do we do something, my brothers and my sisters, called takif. What does takif mean? Putting an exactness on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us with regards to matters of the unseen. Are we clear so far, my brothers and my sisters? Yeah? How can we do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes when we can't even get the exactness when it comes to his creation? Right? We are told about the angels. Right? In the Quran. Pay attention, my brothers and my sisters. Let me ask you guys this question. Do angels have hearts? Huh? Do angels have hearts? What's the delete? What's the evidence? No, you can't just say and make a claim and then you have to give us delil, brother. Huh? Anyone else? He said it's not mentioned, so we don't say it is or it isn't until we find an evidence, right? Taib, do the angels have hearts? Hi, Abdullahi. Allah says in the Quran, حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّعَ عَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ قَالُوا مَاذَا قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put terror in their hearts. And then they will say, what did Allah say? Can anyone here give me the exactness of, all, of the, the hearts of the angels? Huh? How big it is, right? How large, how small. Whether there are veins. Did you guys tell me this? No, 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 you can't. And you're not allowed to. Because you don't have the information. Don't speak about the matters of the unseen unless you have been given divine nusus. Right? Divine revelation through the Quran or the explanation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Otherwise, you cannot comment. Right? The Quran was sent down, my brothers and sisters, in order for us to understand. However, it has to be in light with what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. This is the angel, my brothers and sisters, and you can't give me the exactness. So now when it comes to the attributes and the names of Allah Subhanahu can you give me an exactness of it? Do we start now comparing Allah to His creation? How would you like it if Allah Azza wa Jal Sorry, how would you like it, my brothers and my sisters, if I compared you to an animal, right? 
Allah has created each one in his own way that suits him, صحيح? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he has a face, is it right now to compare the face of Allah to any of his creation? Do we begin to attribute physicalities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely not. Whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has told us, we stick to that. قِفْ حَيْثُ وَقَفَ الْقَوْمِ وَقُلْ بِمَا قَالُوا Wherever they stopped at, we stick to it. We don't go a step further. All of these verses were coming down in the time of the companions, my brothers and my sisters. Right? They could have asked these questions, but they didn't. They took it as face value, my brothers and my sisters. That's how they understood it. For you now to go into ins and outs that you don't have any information of, هذا ليس بصحيح. Does that make sense? This is why he then goes on to say, وَجَمِيعِ آيَاتِ السِّفَاتِ أُمِرُّهَا وَجَمِيعُ آيَاتِ السِّفَاتِ أُمِرُّهَا حَقًّا كَمَا نَقَلَ الطِّرَازُ الْأَوَّلُ when it comes to all of the sifat, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I go with it, right, as it was mentioned to us. Haqqan, in truth, kama naqala tiraz al-awwalu. The same way the great earlier righteous of the past transmitted it. That's what we stick to. Right, Ibn Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi my brothers and my sisters, and I'm going to quickly read this inshaAllah ta'ala. He says, Rawa Abu Bakr al-Bayhaqi fil asma'i wa sifat. Abu Bakr al-Bayhaqi, he reported in Asma'u al-Sifat bi Asna'u al-Sahih with an authentic chain of narration that al-Awza'i by the who's al-Awza'i? Does anyone know? Huh? Ahsant. Right? From amongst the Atba'u al-Tabi'een, my brothers and my sisters, there was al-Aimmat al-Arba'ah. From amongst the Atba'u al-Tabi'een. I'm not talking about the four great Imams when it comes to fiqh. Imam Abu Hanif, la. Amongst the Atba'u Tabi'een, there was what they referred to as the Great Four or the Fantastic Four. Does anyone know who the four were? You could say perhaps they covered four corners of the world. Huh? One of them was what? Imam al awzai who was the Imam of Sham. Who else? No, Abu Hanifa, he was from the Tabi'een. Huh? We're talking from we're talking about the Atba'u Tabi'een. Huh? Ahsant. Who said that? Layth ibn Sa'ad. He was the Imam of which country? Egypt. Ahsant. Misr. Who else? Imam Malik. He was the Imam of which country? Hijaz. Right? And then you have the fourth. Who was the fourth? Sufyan al-Thawri. Who was the Imam of? Al-Iraq. No, um. So anyways, here Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi is saying that Al-Awza'i mentioned Kunna wattabi'una mutawafirun Right? We lived at a time when there was many of the tabi'is He's from the Atba'u tabi'in There was many of the tabi'is Right? Naqulu inna Allah ta'ala Dhikruh Fawqa arshi wa nu'minu bima waradat fihi sunnatu min sifatihi Right? In the presence of many of the tabi'is, he said, right, we would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. وَنُؤْمِنُ And we believe, right, in that which has been reported in the sunnah with regards to the sifat, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And as our brother mentioned, right, that Imam Al-Awza'i rahmatullahi alayhi was one of the four great Imams and we mentioned the other three. All of them. Imam Al-Iraq, Imam Al-Sham. Haka shuhrat al-qawli fi zaman al-tabi'in bil-iman bi anna Allah ta'ala fawq al-arsh wa bi sifatihi al-sam'iyya wa inna ma qala al-Awza'i hadha ba'da zuhuri madhabi al-jahm madhabi jahmin right? مذهب جهم المنكر لكون الله فوق عرشه والناف لصفاته ليعرف الناس أن مذهب السلف خلاف ذلك. And the reason why Imam Al-Awza'i rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned all of this, my brothers and my sisters, because this was at a time, right, when Jahab ibn Safwan, who was one of the misguided individuals who preceded or came before them, 
began to say all sorts of things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in order to save God and protect the aqeed of the Muslim, right? He began to mention to them how we should understand a lot of these verses that speak about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This individual came along and he said, Allah Azza wa is not above his throne and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have any attributes and so on and so forth as mentioned over here. So he came, my brothers and sisters, in order to protect the aqeed of the Muslims so that it can become widespread. And this was also being second and reiterated by the other three great imams from amongst the tabi atba' wa tabi'id. Are you brothers and sisters with me? Tayyip. Even my brothers and my sisters, when we look at some of the statements of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Maliki, uh, Imam Malik, and also Imam Shafi'i and, and Ahmed ibn Hanbal, they have similar statements that was mentioned by al awzai and so on and so forth. Like Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, my beloved brothers and sisters, لا يوصف, لا يوصف الله تعالى بصفات المخلوقين. You do not describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the, right, Huh. You do not compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his creation, right? You don't describe in a way that you describe the creation, right? And likewise, when it comes to the ghadab, the rida, the anger of Allah and the way Allah azza wa jal becomes satisfied. Sifatani min sifati bila kayf. These are two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't go into kayf, which basically means going into the exactness of how these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Right? Also in Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar, Imam Muhanif rahmatullahi alayhi says, وَلَهُ يَدٌ وَوَجْهٌ وَنَفْسٌ كَمَا ذَكَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ Allah Azza wa Jalli has a hand, Allah Azza wa Jalli has a face, Allah Azza wa Jalli has a nafs. Right? He has a soul, the same way Allah Azza wa Jalli told us in the Qur'an. Right? Or how Allah Azza wa Jalla told us in the Qur'an. فَمَا ذَكَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ مِن ذِكْرِ الْوَجْهِ وَالْيَدِّ وَالنَّفْسِ فَهُوْ لَهُ صِفَاتٌ بِلَا كَيْفٍ And whatever Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned with regards to the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, right, we do not go into the exactness of it. Then you have Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi who said something similar with regards to, right, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فِي السَّمَاءِ, السماء وَعِلْمُهُ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ Allah Azza wa Jal is above the heavens and his knowledge is everywhere. Ibn Abd al-Barr, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, لا نسميه ولا نصفه ولا نطق عليه إلا ما سمى ووصف به نفسه. We only say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And we only attribute to him that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about himself. And we don't go a step further, right? And we don't start going into intricacies that you don't have any information about. And then Imam Shafi'i, right? الذي هو كما وصف به نفسه وفوق ما يصفه به خلقه right? أو خلقه إلى آخره Have I lost you guys, my brothers and my sisters? Has it become too technical? What is now the summary and the conclusion in regards to what all of these great Imams mentioned? Uh, what do we take away from this, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? Naam, we stick to what Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have mentioned with regards to Allah Azza because this is a very sensitive issue. We can't say about Allah Azza wa Jalla that which He hasn't said about Himself. Are you brothers and sisters with me? And we stick to that and we don't go into the exactness of these different sifat that you don't have any information about. You couldn't do that about the heart of the angels. And likewise, when it comes to the fruits of Al-Jannah, can anyone tell me exactly how some of the fruits are going to be? Huh? Can anyone tell me? You know, the most fruits, how exactly it's going to look. Are you able to do that? And these are from the creations of Allah, Azza wa Jal, right? The matters of the unseen. Sah? And then he says, وَأَرُدُّ عُهْدَتَهَا إِلَىٰ نُقَالِهَا وَأَصُونُهَا عَنْ كُلِّ مَا يُتَخَيَّلُ And I return the obligatory responsibility with regards to how we look at these names and these attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal towards those who have transmitted these, trans, uh, transmitted these narrations. Right? Likewise, he says, it is safeguarded against any imaginations. Right? As anything that comes to mind in terms of interpretations. 
Allah is beyond that and free from it. Whatever you think about Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers and my sisters, and you try to get an exact image about how, right, the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal is, you will not be able, right, to get it right. Allah is beyond all of these imaginations. And then he says, قُبْحًا لِمَنْ نَبَذَ الْكِتَابَ وَرَاءَهُ وَإِذَا اسْتَدَلَّ يَقُولُ قَالَ الْأَخْطَلُ Disgrace to the one, my brothers and my sisters, he says. The one who throws the Qur'an behind him. And then when he wants to use as proof, he quotes an individual called Al-Akhtar who was a Nasrani. Right? He was a Christian poet. Right? So you had when it came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, him being quoted with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal ascending over his throne. And like we mentioned before, my brothers and my sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal has told us, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Allah has ascended above his throne. Right? And we stick to what Allah Azza wa Jal has told us without going into the ins and the outs that we don't have any information about. Ibn Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi, my brothers and my sisters, and I think it's worth mentioning, he says, فَمَنْ وَصَفَهُ بِمِثْلِ صِفَاتِ الْمَخْلُقِينَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ فَهُ مُخْطِئٌ قَطْعًا he says, anyone who describes Allah with attributes similar to those of his creatures is definitely in error. Right? كَمَنْ قَالْ The same way somebody says, إِنَّهُ يَنْزِلُ فَيَتَحَرَّكُ وَيَنْتَقِلُ It's like one saying about Allah, when he comes down now, right? In the last third, as we will come unto inshallah ta'ala in a short while. This is like someone who claims that God descends, Allah Azza wa descends, so he travels from one place to another like a human descending. Huh? كما ينتقل الإنسان من السطح إلى أسفل الدار كقول من يقول إنه يخلو منه العرش فيكون نزوله تفريغا لمكان وشغلا لآخر أو شغلا لآخر فهذا باطل يجب تنزيه الرب عنه كما تقدم. Right? And he goes into all of these different intricacies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. My brothers and my sisters, we do not go into any of that whatsoever. And here he mentions, or like someone who says that the throne is vacated when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down in the last third of the night. So his descent is, vac is vacating of one place and occupying another. All of this is false. And God, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must be exonerated from such descriptions as mentioned earlier. Everybody with me now, my brothers and my sisters, don't go into that which you don't have information of. And then he says, my brothers and my sisters, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ يَرَوْنَ حَقًّا رَبَّهُمْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ بِغَيْرِ كَيْفٍ يَنْزِرُ The believers are going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We are going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, in two places. Does anyone know the two places, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? We will see him in Jannah and where else? Naam. When we are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be seeing Allah jalla fi ula. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uncover the veil. Right? And as Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, "Kalla innahum an Rabbihim yom ma'idin la mahjubun." As for the kuffar, my brothers and my sisters, right? Innahum an Rabbihim yom ma'idin la mahjubun. They will be deprived of being able to see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? Uzibu bil hijab. They mentioned this is a form of a punishment, being prevented to see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, my brothers and my sisters. And as we know, as Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Wujuhun yomaidin nadira ila Rabbiha nadira." The day when the faces of the believers it will glow, it will shine, right? And they will be directly looking at Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then, my brothers and my sisters, when we, inshaAllah Taala, are admitted into Al Jannah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to see Allah Jalla fi Ula, right? Here this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that gets me excited every time I read it to my brothers and my sisters. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةِ When the people of Jannah are admitted into Al-Jannah, right? 
يقول الله تبارك وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى وسي تريدون شيئا أزيدكم Is there anything else that I can give to you all فيقولون And you know what they will say to him ألم تبيض وجوهنا Didn't you whiten our faces ألم تدخلنا الجنة وتنجنا من النار Didn't you admit us into الجنة And you protected us from the hellfire Right فيكشف الحجاب الله سبحانه وتعالى will remove the veil فما أعطوا شيئا As I'm going through this my brothers and my sisters imagine it We are all in الجنة إن شاء الله تعالى Right فما أعطوا شيئا أحب إليهم من النظر إلى ربهم عز وجل Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says There is nothing more greater and more beloved that they are granted the people of Jannah than seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the fruits, it's not the food, it's not the alcohol, huh? That you'll be getting, right? Of course, not the alcohol that you have here, a different type of alcohol, and wine, shrubat, and whatever else you can think of, my brothers and my sisters, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهِيَ الزِّيَادَةِ There is a ziyada. This term here, a ziyada that Allah talked about in Surah Yunus. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ What is being referred to here is what? Being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the chance to see Allah Jalla fi ula. And we can only qualify my brothers and my sisters to be from those individuals if, if when, we do righteous deeds. We do that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You know, sometimes we think about the capabilities of Allah azza wa jalla, everything that He does for us. How everything is so perfectly organized and arranged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He makes us feel good, my brothers and my sisters. This is what we are getting here in this dunya that is filled with oppression, suppression, hardships and difficulties. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أُدْخِلْنَا الْجَنَّةِ after we are entered into our Jannah, my brothers and my sisters. Right. And then he says, وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ بِغَيْرِ كَيْفٍ يَنْزِلُ Right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down. Right. In a manner that suits His Majesty. Without going into what? كيف. كيف. What does it mean? How. Right. Have we been told that information, my brothers and my sisters? No, we haven't. Right? So putting an exactness or a position on the how, this is something that we haven't been told about. So knowing now, my brothers and my sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, يَنزِلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Right? Allah azza wa jal, the seven heavens, right? He comes down to the last heavens that is above the dunya. What are we going to be doing, my brothers and my sisters? Now that we've learned this, we're going to go on to Twitter and start arguing and debating. What is the thamara, the fruits of us going through this now, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? When Allah Azza wa Jalla comes down in a manner that suits His Majesty, as mentioned to us by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? What does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say? Huh? Hiya Jama'ah. Hiya Jama'ah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say when he comes down? It's the hadith, it's, 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 uh, the hadith, uh, Abi Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Huh? Ahsant. Why are you guys so shy for, yani? Right? He always takes the first one to say it and then everyone else follows. Adi, ma fi mishkil. I don't bite, brothers. Allah azza wa jalla says, right? Whoever wants to make dua, let me accept his dua. Right? Whoever wants to ask me of anything, let me now give him whatever he wants. After knowing this, my brothers and my sisters, how can he continue sleeping in the last side of the night? Right, the greatest portion of the night, my brothers and my sisters. A lot of the time when I am contacted by brothers and sisters who are suffering from addictions and hardships and whatever have you, and they're really, really struggling, one of the cures that I give them, my brothers and my sisters, is wake up in the last third of the night. As the Messenger وسلم, told us, It expels the sicknesses that you have. 
whether it may be the spiritual sickness or the physical sickness. And what it also does, my brothers and my sisters, it helps you now to overcome the sins that you're suffering from. Last part of the night, my brothers and my sisters. Al-Maliku Dayan, the king of all kings, comes down to respond to your difficulties and hardships, my brothers and my sisters, and you're fast asleep. For all of you brothers who earlier mentioned, huh, that you are engaged, on your wedding night you should be waking up. On your wedding night, brother, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a marriage that is blessed. Is that a tough ask, guys? Why are you guys smirking for? Huh? Is that a tough ask? If somebody may say, I've tried to wake up, I've tried to wake up. My sins have tied me down. Right? I just don't seem to be able to wake up no matter how many alarm clocks I put inside of the room. If you're struggling, my brothers and my sisters, start by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when? At the beginning of the night. Before you go to sleep. Do your witr. Showing Allah that you so desperately want to be from amongst those, right, that are able to interact with the king of all kings at this very noble part of the night. Right? Abdullah ibn Sa'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Wallahu well, tabarak wa ta'ala fawqa al-arsh wa huwa ya'lam ma antum alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the heavens and he knows that which you are upon. Right? Also Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, she used to boast to all of the other wives of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She would say, Zawwaja kunna ahali kunna. All of you were married off by your, huh? by your families. وَزَوَّجَنِ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala married me off from above the seven heavens. Right? Why is this also very, very important, my brothers and my sisters? Sometimes you ask young children with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say Allah azza wa is everywhere. But we are being told by, right, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some of his companions, and this is again the understanding of the Salaf, right? With regards to what we should believe with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal. Hmm. Even we know the incident of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh when he passed the ruling, right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَقَدْ حَكَمْتَ فِيهِمْ بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ Indeed, O Sa'd, you have passed the ruling and the judgment, right? That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has passed from above the seven heavens. The next line of poetry, my brothers and sisters, I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. They were nearly done, brothers and sisters, inshallah. He then says, وَقِرُّ بِالْمِيزَانِ وَالْحَوْضِ الَّذِي أَرْجُوا بِأَنِّي مِنْ هُرِيًّا أَنْهَلُوا He says, I affirm the mizan, scales, and also the hold, which I will explain in a moment, inshallah ta'ala, right? Which you could say maybe is what? Huh? A pond. الَّذِي أَرْجُوا مِنْ الَّذِي أَرْجُوا بِأَنِّي مِنْ هُرِيًّا أَنْهَلُ Which I hope to quench my thirst with. With regards to the skin, my brothers and my sisters, all of our, uh, all of us are going to be weighed and our actions are going to be weighed. And the scrolls are going to be weighed. Three things that are going to be weighed, my brothers and my sisters. Right? With regards to his description, right, we are told through the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the scale, it will have two pans in which the good deeds and the bad deeds will be placed upon. Hmm? Scale, my brothers and my sisters. It will have kifatan, two pans and also a tongue. You're going to try and imagine it but it is beyond one's imagination, as we mentioned before. Do we have the exactness of it? No. It has two pans and a tongue. Is it going to be like your tongue? Is it going to be a long tongue? Is it going to be a short tongue? Do we have the information? No, we don't. We make these jokes sometimes, then you have a long tongue. Can we say that about the issues of the unseen? No, we can't. 
right? And as we mentioned, the three things that are going to be weighed is what? Who remembers? I mentioned it very, very quickly earlier, so I asked you guys this question right now, so that we don't end up forgetting. What are the things that are going to be weighed? Hsent. The actions, what else? Scrolls, and what else? The person himself. And then there's a fourth thing. Does anyone know? Did I mention earlier? How many did I say? Mention three. Type. There's a fourth one as well. What? Does anyone know the fourth one? Anyone who guesses, I'm giving him ten pounds. Huh? Huh? He said the shahada. Specifically, the shahada is a bit more general than that. Huh? Sorry. Someone's monotheism. Doesn't that come under the... Uh... But that's the scrolls though, isn't it? That's the... Weighed against the shahada. But that's the scrolls, sahih? Actually, maybe. Uh. But that's righteous deeds, isn't it? The actions. The tawheed that one came with. Right? Huh? He said the bitaqa. That's not what I'm looking for. That could maybe come under the issue of scrolls. Hey. You guys say it all the time. Hey. Huh? The udhiya? Say actions. I'll give you guys a clue. Subhanallah. Why are you guys so specific? And depriving the people. Huh? Open the door, brothers. Huh? He said thoughts. Al aqwal utterances, my brothers and my sisters. Right? You have the aqwal. I'm gonna give you guys the evidence of each one of them. Number one, al aqwal. The statements that an individual utters, such as dhikr. He was right when he said dhikr. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan. Thaqilatani fil mizan habibatani rahman. Uh, do you agree, uh, Abdullahi? Mashi? Right? Two words or two statements that are very, very what? Uh, light upon the tongue. Very heavy on the scale of good deeds. And very beloved to Ar-Rahman. Subhanallah al-Azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Does that make sense? Number two, my brothers and my sisters. Actions. الأعمال الصالحة ما من شيء في الميزان أثقل من حسن الخلق The Messiah Allah Alaihi Wasallam said There isn't anything that is more heavy on the scale of good deeds than what? Than your good manners. Mm. Number three, my brothers and my sisters, is what? The Sahaif, the scrolls. Right? As our brother mentioned earlier, the scrolls that everything is written on will also be what? Weighed. And number four, my brothers and my sisters, is the person himself. Right? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in the hadith, إِنَّهُ لَيَأْتِ الرَّجُلُ الْعَظِيمُ السَّمِينَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَزِنُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لِنَحْبَ عُوضَى A big, fat, huge individual will be brought and will be placed on top of the scale. However, he won't weigh the weight of the wing of a mosquito. He won't weigh what? He won't weigh the weight of the Wing of a mosquito. You can be in the gym all you like, brothers and sisters, and I'm not against people who go to the gym. You can spend hours in there, but then when it comes to the Fajr prayer, my brothers and my sisters, uh, the blanket is too heavy to pick up. My sisters can spend hours in front of the mirror perfecting your outer appearance. Hmm? But then my brothers and my sisters, is this really going to benefit you on Yom Al-Qiyamah? That which is going to benefit you is your righteous deeds. It doesn't matter how big, how skinny, how much you try to perfect your outer appearance, my brothers and my sisters, you will be weighed. Right? And it doesn't matter how you look in your figure. Look at Ibn Mas'ud and radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. كَانَ يَجْتَنِي سِوَاكًا مِنَ الْأَرَاكِ وَكَانَ الدَّقِيقَ السَّاقِينَ Right, he was on top of a tree, he was trying to what? 
take off parts of the the wood in order to turn it into siwak. Siwak. Hmm? And he was someone, my brothers and my sisters, that had thin shins. Right? فَجَعَلَتِ الْرِيحِ huh? So the wind came and it uncovered him. So some of those who were watching Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, they began to laugh. فَضَحِكَ الْقَوْمِ Right? So the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said to them, مِمَّا تَضْحَكُونَ What are you laughing at? They said, مِنْ دِقَّةِ سَاقِيهِ because of how thin his shins are. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam swore by Allah, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدْهِ لَهُمَا أَثْقَلُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ مِنْ أُحُد They are more heavier on the scale of good deeds than Uhud. Uhud! The shins of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه. I'm not against you, my brothers and my sisters, going to the gym and huh, making your outer appearance look good. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ إِسَادِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِلَىٰ عَمَالِكُمْ Allah does not look at your figure and your outer appearance, but rather He looks at your heart. A lot of the time we cut the hadith here, huh? Allah is looking at my heart, my heart is great. No, the end of the hadith says, my brothers and my sisters, قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ and your actions as well. You don't know what's in my heart. My heart is wonderful and the guy is committing zina. Okay, Habibi, I have to tell you what you're doing is wrong. Right? And we have this theory, right? That is proven. That what you believe or what you do with your actions is a product of how your heart has become. Everyone sins, my brothers and my sisters. But when you reach a point when your heart has become so black, what did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ When it becomes corrupt, everything else becomes corrupt as well. Your limbs now begin to become corrupt. Allah looks at two things. What are they? Your heart and also your actions. And we can only judge from that which is apparent. I'm seeing you do something wrong for you to turn around to me and say, mind your own business. No, my brother, this is now part of my business because you're doing it in front of me. Simply because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever sees an evil, I'm changing with his hand. You can't change it with your hand, you have to change it with what? You can't change it with your hand, you change it with? Speech. You can't change it with your speech, you change it with? How do you change it with your heart? You stand there in the club, I'm hating it with my heart. Haram. Huh? How do you change it with your heart, my brothers and my sisters? You get up and you leave. You shouldn't even be in a club. I just came to mind, brothers. But I mean, you're in a place where there's haram and they're doing that which is displeasing to Allah. You get up and you leave. Sahih? They, what do you do with the hadith? Min husn islam al mar. This is sometimes quoted a lot. We love this hadith. Part of one being a good Muslim is that he uh, leaves off that which doesn't concern him. Wallah, you'll hear this being quoted. How many times someone said to me, I see people backbiting in my circle and I tell them they shouldn't be doing this and they quote the hadith, Allahu Akbar. They've memorized it from Arba'in Nawi and the backbiting there. And then when you tell them, mind your own business. No, it is part of my business. Sahih, it is part of my business because the messenger son made it part of my business. لا يمنع أن أحدكم هيبة الناس يقول في حق إذا رآه وسمع شهده Abu Sayyid al-Khudr narrates, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hey, but the fear that you have of the people should not prevent you from speaking the truth upon seeing it. Abu Sayyid al-Khudr said, I began to cry. In another narration, he said, I, I wish I never heard it. Because now he has to act upon it. Huh? And then he says, well, hold. What is the hold, my brothers and my sisters? Does anyone know what the hold is? Huh? It's a punt on Yom Al Qiyamah. It will quench the thirst. Remember, my brothers and my sisters, it is extremely hot on the Day of Judgment. Some people are going to have their sweat up until their ankles, some up, on, up until their knees, some up until their waist. Some are going to be drowning in it. The shams. 
the sun is going to be brought a mile away, as in some narrations. Huh? A mile away, brothers and sisters. Me and Abdullahi, we traveled from Leicester. Three hours, brothers. The AC wasn't working. Our brother Abdullah was toasting in the car. This heat that we have here is unbearable. We had to open the windows on the motorway. Right? The da'wah mobile in it, brothers. Allah <laughs> start. The summer becomes extremely hot. You get burnt, my brothers and my sisters, at times. This is nothing like the heat of the hereafter. Hmm? What's the difference between the Hawd and the Kawthar? Allah Azza wa tells our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna a'tainak al-Kawthar. We have indeed given you the Kawthar. What's the difference between the Hawd, the pond that you will find, huh? On the day of judgment, right? Mm. And the kawthar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about. Huh? What's the difference between two? Huh? A kawthar, my brothers and my sisters, is a, right? Is a river in Al-Jannah huh? that streams all the way till that Mokhif on the day of resurrection. Are you brother and sister with me? It comes from the Kothar and then it arrives at the Hawd. And the evidence for that is Hadith Abi Dhar radiallahu ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said يَشْخُبُ فِيهِ مِزَابَان مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ لَمْ يَضْمَأ يعني It's a stream that comes directly from Al-Jannah all the way to this hold. Right? In another narration, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَعْطَانِي الْكَوْثَرِ Allah Azza wa gave me the kawthar. فَهُوَ نَحْرٌ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ يَسِيلُ فِي حَوْضِي Right? It streams into my hold. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us some descriptions here. We're about, we're able to mention it because we've been given this information about the Hawd. لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ بَيَاضًا مِنَ الثلج. Right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, It is more whiter than what? Than thalj, than snow. In another narration we are told, أَبْرَدُ مِنَ الثلج. Right? It is more colder than the thalj itself, the snow or the ice. ريحه أطيب من المسك. The smell, my brothers and my sisters, uh, is more scentful than what? Than musk. طعمه أحلى من العصل, من العسل. Its taste, it is more sweeter than honey. Right? كيزانه أباريقه كعدل نجوم السماء. The cups that come with it, my brothers and my sisters, are more than the stars of the heavens. Hmm? Wahakada. And then he says, my brothers and my sisters, Wakada Siratu Yamuddu Falka Jahannamin, Famuahidin Najun, or Famuahidun Najin, Wa Haru Muhmelu. He says, I also believe in the bridge that has been placed over the hellfire. The one with Tawheed will be saved and the other will fall in it. Right? There is a bridge, my brothers and my sisters, that has been placed above the hellfire. In a narration, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in fact, it was Abu Sa'id al Khudi radiallahu ta'ala anhu that said it. However, this is not something that he can say from his own self. So it has the hukum of something being marfu'. For those who Mustal al-Hadith will understand what I'm saying. Sometimes a companion may say something, but this is a statement of the companion, but he ends up getting the same ruling as something the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Because it's from the matters of the unseen. Right? If you don't understand, I don't worry too much about it. Abu Sa'in al-Khudri said, بَلَغَنِي أَنَّ الْجِسْرَ أَدَقُّ مِنَ الشعرة. You know this bridge that has been placed over the hellfire? It is more thinner than hair. 
And you're imagining yourself now, my brothers and sisters, imagine you have a huge guy. Huh? How is he going to be able to walk on a bridge that is as thin as hair? Right? Remember, my brothers and my sisters, the matters of the hereafter is something that is beyond imagination. Mm. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, my brothers and my sisters, how the people will be crossing this bridge. Right? Some of the believers will cross the bridge as quickly as the wink of an eye. It doesn't matter how many kilos he was, abadan. It doesn't matter how huge this individual was, my brothers and my sisters, the wink of an eye, he'll be able to cross that bridge. Right? Some others as quick as the lightning. Which one is quicker? Blink of an eye or the lightning? Huh? The blink of an eye or lightning? Blink of an eye. This was the first thing I was mentioning. <laughs> also, my brothers and my sisters, as strong as the wind. This is now what? The other description I was given. Or fast horses or she camels. The way the horse is so quick when it runs. That was mentioned. And some, my brothers and my sisters, will be safe without any harm. They will just about be able to go over that bridge. No. Um, after receiving some scratches and so on and so forth. And some, my brothers and my sisters, they will fall down into the hellfire. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to cross the bridge, right? As quick as the blink of an eye. Or should we say lightning? Huh? Uh, these are just some, my brothers and my sisters, we're running through it as much as we can. Then he goes on to say, وَالنَّارُ يَصْلَاهَ الشَّقِيُّ بِحِكْمَةٍ وَكَذَا التَّقِيُّ إِلَى الْجِنَانِ سَيَدْخُلُ He says, those that will be admitted into the hellfire, my brothers and my sisters, right, are the wrongdoers, the wretched. Right? And this is via the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His divine wisdom. As for the taqi, the pious individual, he will be admitted into the jannah. Right? My brothers and my sisters, this issue of hikmah, I would love to elaborate on it. The wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people an equal opportunity to be guided. However, it is something within them. Right? It is something within them. Because Allah azza wa jal has given you the ability to act. You are not a feather in the middle of the wind. Or like a dead person that is being washed who doesn't have a choice. You go inside of the news agents or the corner shop and you choose which crisp packet you want to steal. Whether it is prawn cocktail or salt and vinegar. No one forces you to do anything. Right? Are you brothers and sisters with me? We cannot be using the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, it's the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal as to why I am misguided or as to why I commit haram. There's even a narration that Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentions that a man came to Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he said, right, after he was caught stealing, oh, this was the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he said, the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. <laughs> the qadr of Allah, the decree of Allah is for me now to apply the penal code on you. And what is the penal code? You guys know. Huh? Don't blame the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal for committing sins. Right? In fact, this is what the mushrikun, they would say in the past, they would say, لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا أَشْرَكْنَا وَلَا آبَاؤُنَا People of shirk, if the past they would say, if it wasn't for, you know, for the will of Allah, I would have not committed shirk. Do you not choose the drive, my brothers and my sisters? You go to the edge of the cliff, does anyone, huh? Push you over, go and stand there and say, Allah, it's the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. Would you say that? Guys, how many lines of poetry remaining? Khalas. Three. And the last one isn't necessarily even something that requires a thorough elaboration and explanation. So there's only what? Two left, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَلِكُلِّ حَيٍّ عَاقِلٍ فِي قَبْرِهِ عَمَلٌ يُقَارِنُهُ هُنَاكَ وَيُسْأَلُ Every hay. 
living individual who is sane. In the qabr, my brothers and my sisters, in the grave, he will have actions that will accompany him. And he will be asked, my brothers and my sisters, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَةً When a person passes away, three things follow him. Two things come back and one stays with him. Does anyone know the two things that will come back? Huh? His family and also what? His wealth, Ahsant. What is it that which remains with him? His deeds. You know, my brothers and my sisters, every time I come across this hadith, I mention an incident that I can never forget. There was this brother who I believe was either stabbed or shot. I can't remember exactly. After the funeral, these are his friends huh, that have attended the funeral. I went to Pepe's. You guys heard of Pepe's? And I seen a bunch of young men sitting there. By the way, this is not a, uh, a promotion for Pepe's. Wallahi, I'm standing there, my brothers and my sisters. These are his friends. And you know what they're speaking about? They're speaking about the football match. Their friend just passed away. It's that quick that they've already forgotten about him. They're speaking about football. Huh? That's how quickly people forget you, my brothers and my sisters. People leave. And it's only you, yourself, and your actions. We hear me, myself, and I, sir. Huh? You, yourself, and your actions. In the famous hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when somebody passes away, all of his actions come to an end, except some knowledge that you left behind, right? Sadaqatun a continuous charity. And also a righteous child that you left behind that makes dua for you, that you invested in, right? If you didn't invest in him, he's not going to make dua for you, brothers and sisters. I know multi-millionaires that passed away and I have to distribute the inheritance. I have to calculate it. And their children, my brothers and my sisters, wallah, you could see fire in their eyes when looking at their siblings, their blood brothers and sisters. Right. Father, Leila, Wanahara, and day and night, he was accumulating all of that wealth. Right? Just so they could be financially stable after he passed away. May Allah Azza reward him for that. But there is an investment that is greater than that, and that is to invest in their deen to teach them. You may leave them behind with nothing, but he appreciates everything that the father done in terms of his religion, which at the end of the day is going to matter. So then he says, you well, and in this grave you will be asked. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Inna al Abda Ida fi qabrih. I want you, my brothers and my sisters, to be with me, right? As we go through this stage of the hereafter. إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا وُضِعَ فِي قَبْرِهِ وَتَوَلَّ عَنْهُ أَصْحَابُهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسْمَعُ قَرْعَ نِعَارِهِمْ You are placed inside of the grave. Right. And those who dropped him off have now left. He begins to hear the clatters of their shoes walking away. فَيَأْتِيهِ مَلَكَانْ Two angels come to him. فَيُقْعِدَانِ They set him up. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They say to him, مَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلُ What did you used to say about this man? Meaning Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Right. Ha, ha. This is exactly what was mentioned in the hadith. Ha. سَمِعْتُ النَّاسَ يَقُولُونَ شَيْئًا فَقُلْتُهُ I heard the people saying something, so I said it as well. Doesn't know anything about the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, over the years, I would always reflect on this part of the hadith. And as time went on, my brothers and my sisters, that which began to become very clear is the following. Would you agree, my brothers and my sisters, there are many of us Muslims 
who are Muslims by name, born into Muslim families. And it may well be that 20, 30, 40, 50 years go past and we barely ever, right, learn about who the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. And he is nothing more than a name and the fact that he's a prophet, wa khalas. That's scary, my brothers and my sisters. Right? That is honestly really, really scary. You know what happens? فَيُضْرَبُ بِمِطْرَقَةٍ مِنْ حَدِيدٍ A iron hammer is brought and it's smacked in between his eyes. فَيَصِيحُ صَيْحَةٍ And he will shout. Everything will hear it except the thaqalain, the jinnanids. Right. Imagine we could hear what's happening inside of the grave, my brothers and my sisters. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time he said, Lawla an tadafanu la da'utu Allah an yusmi'akum. Adab al qabr. If it wasn't for the fact that you are going to be buried, I would have wanted for you to hear punishment in the grave. There are some exemptions of those who are going to be tested in the grave. There are groups of people, categories of people that are going to be exempted from being tested in a grave. And when we say tested, the questions that they will be asked, and this is indeed a great test, my brothers and my sisters. Does anyone know some of those that are not going to be tested in the grave? Huh? Number one, the shuhada. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kafa bi bariqat suyufi ala ra'si fitna. The fact that he was struck is enough, right? He won't be tested inside of the grave. Huh? I have five written down here, my brothers and my sisters. You guys got one. What are the other four? Huh? Sant. You could say that. Now, man la taklif alayk al sagir wal majnuni fa inna huma la fitna. There's no fitna for this for these individuals who aren't religiously obliged. There's a difference of opinion, but perhaps the correct ver- the correct position is that they're not going to be tested. Huh? That's two now. Where's the third? Huh? That would come under somebody who's not religiously obliged. Al murabit. Al murabit. Does anyone know what a murabit is? Someone who's guarding the territory of the Muslims. Right? Protecting them from harm. It's not an easy job. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رِبَاطُ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صِيَامِ شَهْرٍ وَقِيَامِهِ A day and a night. Guarding the Muslims is better than, right? Fasting for a whole month, right? And praying the night throughout the whole month. وَإِنْ مَاتَ جَرَى عَلَيْهِ عَمَلُ If he passes away, whatever he was doing, the actions on his scale of good deeds will continue, Right? وَأُجْرِي عَلَيْهِ رِزْخُهُ وَأَمِنَ الْفَتَّانِ And it will also be protected from the fitna of the grave. Number three, or is that now what? We've done three. Number four, is that Siddiqun? The truthful ones. Right? The truthful ones. Hmm. Why do they say the truthful ones? Because when you look at the verse, وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَيْكِ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ the Siddiqeen, they were mentioned before the Shuhada. So the scholars, they mentioned, right? It's only right to say that they will not be tested as well simply because they were mentioned before the Shuhada. Hmm. And likewise, the Prophets, they're not going to be tested as well. Right? As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anni tus'alun. Some scholars also mentioned, my brothers and my sisters, to die on the day of Jum'ah based on a hadith which has been disputed and discussed amongst the scholars of hadith ma min muslimin yamutu yawm al-jum'ati aw laylat al-jum'ati illa waqahu Allah aw illa waqahu Allah fitnat al-qabr never does an individual die on the day of Jum'ah or in the night of al-jum'ah which is Thursday night except that Allah azza wa protect him from the fitna of the grave but the scholars they you know, disputed this hadith. Allah, ya Shaykh. <laughs> he concludes by saying, هذا اعتقاد الشافعي ومالك وبحنيفة ثم أحمد ينقل 
He says this, whatever we've taken today, my brothers and my sisters, is the belief of a Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Abu Hanifata, and Imam Ahmad, rahmatullahi alayhi. فَإِنْ اتَّبَعْتَ سَبِيلَهُمْ If you follow your their way, فَمُوَفَّقٌ you will acquire success. وَإِنْ اِبْتَدَعْتَ فَمَا عَلَيْكَ مُعَوَّلُوا And if you innovate or you deviate from that which has been mentioned, then don't blame anyone except yourself. Right? Very, very quickly, my brothers and my sisters, a quick tarjama uh, of these four great imams of our religion. Abu Hanifa, his name is, does anyone know his name? An Nu'man al-Thabit, ahsantum. Right? Was born in the year 80, passed away in the year 150. Right? Adraki Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? He met Anas ibn Malik and Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa wa Sahli ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi. Three of the companions were mentioned. Right? Al-Dhahabi rahmatullahi alayhi says, huwa al-imamu faqihu al-milla. He's a great imam. The faqih of this religion. Alim al-Iraq. He is the scholar of Iraq. Wulid al-Sanata. Was born in the year 80. In the time of the younger companions, spoke, or should I say, he saw Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, it wasn't reported that he ever narrated anything from him. Right? Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi also has some very nice things to say about Imam Abu Hanifa. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi has countless statements speaking positively about Ibn, or should I say, Al Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. Right? I have a video online where I mention some of the uh, things that Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi had to say about him. But for the sake of time, we will leave it and maybe you guys can refer back to that video. And then you have the second out of the four great Imams in terms of age, or should I say in terms of precedence coming before the others. His name is Malik ibn Anas. A good way to remember is to flip Anas ibn Malik's name. Malik ibn Anas. <sighs> Was born in the year 93, right? Hijri. And then passed away in the year 189. Some scholars, they differ. They said he was born in the, ni- in the year 95. Imam al-Dhahib, rahmatullahi alayhi, said about him, he Shaykh al-Islam, Hujjat al-Ummah. He is Shaykh al-Islam, gave him that title. Imam Dar al-Hijrah. He was the Imam of Dar al-Hijrah, meaning al-Madina. Then you also have Imam al-Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi. What was his name? Muhammad ibn Idris. Uh, passed away in the year that Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi or should I say he was born in the year that Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi passed away what year was that? for those who remember? huh? 150. Imam Abu Hanifa passed away in which year? 150 when was Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi born? he was born in the year 150 um, طيب and then you have Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'ah makes up these four great imams of fiqh, right? Wa Allahum sta'an wa alayhi tuklan wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. I will conclude by saying the following. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, when he was asked to write an aqidah, when he was asked to write an aqidah, he wrote for them Aqeelatul Wasthiyah. Gave them the answers that they were looking for. And then he said the following. فَهَادَ الْإِعْتِقَادُ هُوَ الْمَأْثُورُ عَنَ النَّبِيِّ وَأَصْحَابِهِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ This Aqeelah that I've now written down for you is what has been narrated or taken directly from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. وَهُمْ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَهُمْ الفرقة الناجية فإنه قد ثبت على غير واحد من الصحابة أنه قال And then he says Whoever follows this then it is hoped that inshallah ta'ala is part of the safe sect Right And then he mentions Right الإيمان يزيد وينقص وكل ما ذكرته في ذلك فإنه مأثور Whatever we mention it has been taken directly from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions up until when he says, وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ خَالَفَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذَا الْإِعْتِقَادِ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ هَالِكَا فَإِنَّ الْمُنَازِعَ قَدْ يَكُونَ مُجْتَهِدًا مُخْطِئًا He says, Not everyone that opposes that which I have documented in this book, 
right? Should be dealt with in a way that he is someone who has become destroyed. Remember earlier when I said, my brothers and my sisters, we don't want to walk away from today's class, right? In an arrogant way, behaving in a manner that we are going to Al-Jannah and everyone else is going to the hellfire. There is still a lot to do before we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cut this out, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes studying these books, one begins to feel this way. In this arrogant manner, as if he has some sort of green card now to enter into Al-Jannah. We came here today to learn about our belief, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi saying, if someone has opposed that which we have mentioned today, you cannot deal with this individual automatically as if khalas, he has now become destroyed. Because he says, someone may have opposed some of the things that we mentioned, and he done ijtihad, and he's mistaken in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his mistake. وَقَدْ لَا يَكُونُ بَلَغَهُ فِي ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ And maybe the knowledge didn't reach him. And now you're treating him like some individual that is going to the hellfire. And you are treating him like some individual now, my brothers and my sisters, that is destructed. So take it easy. He's teaching us, my brothers and my sisters, to be patient. Right? وَقَدْ يَكُونُ لَهُ مِنَ الْحَسَنَاتِ مَا يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ سَيِّئَاتِ And it could be, my brothers and my sisters, he says that he has so many good deeds, right? The bad that he may have fallen into will drown in all of these good deeds that he has. Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? He mentioned some reasonings, so you don't start behaving in a way that you start giving out tickets to others. As we mentioned before, and I will conclude with this, we as Muslims, when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worship Allah as between what? What were the two wings? وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ بَنَوْ مَنَازِلَ سَيْرِهِمْ بَيْنَ الرَّجَعَ وَالْخَوْفِ لِلْدَّيَّانِ As Sa'di rahmatullahi alayhi mentions in his Sayyid Allah wa Dar al-Akhirah. The awliya, the beloved servants of Allah azza wa jal, they structure their path to Allah azza wa jal between these two characteristics Hope and fear. We hope that Allah Azza wa Jal accept it from us. We hope to acquire the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While at the same time we are on our toes because we are fearful that none of our actions are going to get accepted. Does that make sense my brothers and my sisters? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to act upon that which we study today. I think we can walk away inshallah ta'ala with growing our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hope of acquiring his agenda. Right, when we spoke about Al-Mizan, when we spoke about seeing Allah as a we want this and we have to do righteous deeds in order to be able to get there. Right. Jazakumullah khair, my brothers and my sisters, and an extra jazakallah khairan for sacrificing the euros. It's not easy. And I know sometimes how much you really badly want it, but you sat here in order to learn your religion. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, shadow and la ilahilant, astaghfiruka wa atawilik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.